Um, okay, are you guys all cool to do this? Oh, Shall we? Oh, Shall we? Okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh my God, we're live. Oh my God, we're on the internets. Holy cow. That's okay. Flip through I'm the book. Flip through the book. The cameras all look good. I only messed up a couple of them. Just Grace and Kurt are a little tweaked. That's, that's okay. Why, that's why I'm stressed. not going to stress yeah, it if yeah. you're not. Um, <laughs> how are you? I guess hey, I am in charge. Hey, that's hey. scary. Uh, at least I'm not flying the ship. You should be stressed. Hey, Hello. Grace. Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi, Hello. Hi, 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 We've been talking for 15 no, minutes no. already, but are you guys hype? Are we hyped? <laughs> Someone has Someone some. Has some is, it, is it me? me? Uh, about, no, hyperspace no, 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 indeed. Okay. That was checking, a good one, Josh. Checking, I, I, heard, chat, chat. I heard that. Yes. Yes. Um. I was. I was. I was. I was briefly investigating the Twitch chat, and then I hopped out. I was like, oh, I gotta get out. Of I gotta get out of there. You sound okay. How does the Twitch chat sound? Do we sound okay? I'm not hearing an echo. Yeah, there am I. There am I. But I also don't have Twitch pulled open because I. Oh yeah, you got you got mute the Twitch. I know. Fixed, hey, fixed? Twitch chat. Uh, Kevin Ness is it a character? Don't hate me. <laughs> uh, don't Josh is echoing hard. Hold on. Uh, I can fix it. T- t- should I? Do I need to count? Am I good? I can We're fix okay? it. Great. How many languages can you count in? Go. Just the one. How about now? Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Just the one. I think we're fixed, right? <laughs> no. Do nothing. I think we're good. It was on my end. Oh, so happy you fixed. did it like it's that. It's fixed. Brenna, tech support <laughs> yeah. out in the crowd. Thank you. Thank you. It is good. We got it. Um, we'll need a theme hello, song. Uh, that way. Well, saying, Rich, that you went out premiere. completely. A dragonfly. D&D in space. Well, uh, in this space, is be no one can hear exciting. you DMs. <laughs> <laughs> right, right? I'm pretty much going to do it like that every I time. I think it's like the Wi-Fi is probably a little spotty from out here. Yeah. The deep recesses. Of the I went out completely. Great. This is this is terrific. How about now? I, no. I mean, I can. Kevin, this no is no what it's going to be like you all. All, every time. It's just a <laughs> yeah. car, and Rich is going to try and hold it together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Better one. The ship is a metal hand. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah. You'd think I know how to do this by now. I know we can hear each other. Kevin says you're fine. I know. Hey. Every week. We're ready. Yeah, that's Where's basically this? all the scams. Hey, um, yo, I want to just... go to space. Please. Yeah. Oh, then I'm gonna stay. I'm just waiting for them to tell me. Yeah. We're cool. I think Grace, we're cool. But we've been planning yeah, this mission. I think mission. it's cool. I think You're I fixed it. It was all like sleep? tweeted out for a second. No. Cool. Uh, so not me, not you. Not me. Space. In space. So. Earth. Uh, um. So, yeah, we have been planning this. We put, like, a lot of time into planning this. I've been, like, waffling back and forth a little bit. Waffle said the name of, um, what, like, the third show was going to be. I wanted to do, like, another show here, and I wasn't sure what it was going to be. I like a lot of, like, the old-school D&D stuff. You guys all know my drill. I've been, like, playing forever. And so there's a couple of cool old worlds. You have, like, Ravenloft, which is goth car, and Dark Sun is, like, the Dune D&D, like, post-apocalyptic Mad yeah, Max just Josh, desert no one world, else. like, no one else. kind of stuff. <laughs> this is all um, and then <laughs> Josh not, became not addicted to D&D, and then happy, he was like, I'm I want to go to space, blame. and I was like, uh, Someone's <laughs> got to do it. No. I, I mean, like, there were, there were many rampant addictions. Well, you particularly said space, and I was like, oh my god, we need to play Spelljammer. Because Spelljammer is weird and strange, and there's squid ships and, and all kinds of weird stuff in space. And uh, how could we not go in on that? So it felt pretty cool. So basically, we've spent, like, I've spent uh, the last, like, probably, like, six months, six weeks, two months, uh, like, tearing through old Spelljammer books and old Planescape books. And Spelljammer was, like, this campaign setting set in space. And Planescape was about the planes, the many planes of the D&D multiverses, the elemental planes, the astral planes, the Feywild, the Shadowfell. We've been to a bunch of the planes in all. Our, uh, our home game at Post Show Recaps on the Post Show Recaps Discord server. And so um, I was really excited about this idea and, and gathered together this elite coterie of human beings, 
all of whom agreed to participate in this madness of their own volition. <laughs> so I have consent. Don't hold anything against me here. And uh, then uh, then we started talking. We spent like the last month mucking around. We played a game of microscope and we built out a whole like timeline and a history <laughs> of our world, which is space. Uh, on, the, <laughs> on this premise of like how do these D&D races get to space like what's the deal here how did this happen right uh, so for any like hardcore old school spell jammer fans this is not that but um, there's going to be a lot of inspiration and homage and I'm stealing and modifying and taking like a ton of stuff out of that um, so as you can see we're rolling deep like including me there's eight of us there's seven players we could do that every week we will not uh we're like popping off big time right now but we're gonna run this like mini west marches style where we have a ship and we have a crew and uh the seven of you are gonna be able to like mix and match and play in different configurations and i'm sure there will be times again where we are all here though i think that will be the exception not the rule um week to week you'll be guaranteed to see some configuration of the eight of us that are here uh probably i'll be here every time and uh <laughs> and we will play we will explore the stars and see what's going on. Um, so the show is called Dragonfly. The ship is a dragonfly. This is like a traditional ship from the old Spelljammer books. I threw pictures around in a couple of places. Thank you for that subscription, Josh. Um, other Josh. Uh, another other Josh. I did it another Josh. time. Um, I'll take it. M-O-T-P-D. Yeah. And so um, the dragonfly is like this cool ship. That looks like a dragonfly. And we were kind of kicking around ideas. And I started throwing art in like the group DM. And we really liked it. And there was this very clear like we're uh, uh, Melissa Woodward, hardcore Firefly fan. Uh, was like you all should have watched this if you haven't. And shamed those of us who have not. But it, it felt like low hanging fruit. And so we grabbed it. And here we are. There was a lot of momentum for it you. when like dragonfly emerged as a possibility. Everyone's like. Oh, yeah, let's just steal that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dragon, it's there. Fly, yeah. it's there. Yeah. I, saw, it's like. it's I saw this there. hilarious comic last night that was like, I have finally done it. I have mastered the DM trifecta. And there were like these three books, Make Two Players Cry, uh, Kill the Entire Party. And, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was very funny. Is then the other one steal every like steal yes. every idea steal every, every fictional work that I've yeah. ever read in my right. life. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> which is like clearly uh, all that I've done to make myself seem like a good dungeon. Master. It's a good strategy. So, it's a great strategy. That's what you should do. Steal it all. The it's more obscure, the better. Yeah. Um. So here we are. We're gonna play some D and D. But before we do that, we should figure out who these characters are. So why don't we go around real quick and I'm going to have each of you introduce yourself as a human being here on Twitch, uh, streaming to the masses and then just tell the folks what you're playing. And so, uh, Grace, I'm going to put you on the spot. You're mm. top left. Yeah. Top left. That? I knew that was yeah. coming. Top <laughs> left. Um, <laughs> my name is Grace Leader. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I'm from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, I do some podcasting, um, let's see about queer media, um, and, and reality TV and stuff like that. Um, I'm playing Rhea Dubrook, who is a Fearbulg cleric. Um, uh, tall, like light, light gray skin, uh, brown hair tied back, green eyes, uh, some nice pointy ears uh, pointing up. Um, yeah, that's 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 Rhea. Uh, do, do you want me to go into about like why I'm here? Or we'll get into that later. Uh, or, do you you do can that reveal now? as much as you are comfortable revealing. Like if you want to talk about that, absolutely talk about it. Yeah, so um, Rhea from um, her planet, uh, Pavis, uh, there's a cleric tradition where um, clerics uh, go on an ex exploration journey, um, and, and they do that until they find what they're looking for. Um, so Rhea has taken that, um, left uh, her home planet, and, and found her way on the dragonfly um, in search of what she needs. What that is, um, she's not quite sure yet. Um, uh, she's a cleric. She, she works 
worships the turtle god. She's a Clancyite. Um, we'll get into that in a bit. Clancy <laughs> is a god that um, uh, so she believes is a god that visited the Fearbulk planet many, you're, many you're years ago. You're all going to love Clancy. Let's you're going to love Clancy, yeah. no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Yeah. There's Clancy no doubt. For a reason. <laughs> yeah, he visited the Fearbulk planet, or so some people say, and uh, they were on the, the brink of starvation and told them where they could explore space. They, they needed to leave and go find um, what they needed, and they were able to go and find that and, and save their planet. So all the fear books there worship um, Clancy Dasher Clip. So so uh, Rhea is a Clancyite, um, and and similar to to how Clancy came, um, Rhea is just looking for what she what she needs, and then she'll return back to her home planet. So that's Rhea's uh, what she's doing on the on the Dragonfly. I'm really psyched. I love Furbolgs. It's one of like my favorite things from like the olden days of D and D. I kind kind of can't imagine they were always this really obscure thing, these kind of giants that got trapped in the fairy realm. And like, uh, yeah, I can't believe that they are like as prolific as they are in fifth edition. But I am so psyched that like Furbolgs are an impart, important part of our game. So I'm like Very fired fun. up about yep. Raya Grace. Um, Troy, how about you? You're right there. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I am Troy. I use he, him pronouns. I currently live in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I have a background in higher education and fundraising, among other things. Uh, and uh, today, I and, and in the future, I guess, hopefully, as long as I don't die today, uh, I will be playing Professor Reginald Frybottom. Who is? No, that was his last. Name. Yeah, none of us. We didn't know. Nobody, nobody know did. Yeah. Nobody did. Yes. Oh my goodness. I understand why, but I did not know that was coming. <laughs> that is stunning. Uh, yes. So, uh, Professor Reginald Frybottom <laughs> is a uh, is a GIF Q wizard. Uh, Gif Q, what does that mean? I think you might find that out in time. Uh, but he is uh, he, he appears very similar to the GIF of D&D that you may know, which are large hippopotamus folk. Uh, he is quite tall. Uh, he is quite massive. His weight fluctuates based on which planet he's on because that's tied to gravity. Um, he, uh, you may see in the art, he, he dresses like you might imagine a college professor to dress um, and he is a professor of uh, the arcane uh, and more specifically he is a war magic wizard so uh, he is quite adept at using his intellect and abilities uh, in order to be useful on the battlefield unlike most gif he does not carry a gun or any sort of firearms uh, instead uses his intellect as his weapon of choice um, yeah, and as you noted, uh, Reginald is a GIF Q, and so we talked a bit, like Troy and I brainstormed a bit about, um, like GIF who, the GIF are very traditionally, they come from the Spelljammer campaign setting. I believe that's the first place they're introduced in second edition D&D. Uh, they're this very militant race. Uh, we see them, if you go look at any of the art, you're going to see them in like traditional kind of military attire, buttoned right up and loaded down with black powder. Um, and we talked about the notion of a society of gifts who have rejected uh, this kind of weaponry and uh, the ways of war. And I really love that. So the GIF cube will be relevant and i'm super psyched to have like a traditional um you know gif in the spell jammer game like that's a gif to me thank you for that um <laughs> yeah i do i'm always gonna go for the easy ones oh there so are more cool. out there it's fine we'll get that i know i know we're gonna tread over a lot of that um professor reginald frybottom reginald frybottom I i'm excited for him um melissa you're on the spot Hey, uh, I'm Melissa. I'm a neuroscientist by training. That's my day job. Uh, and I use she, her pronouns, uh, as does my character, Doc. So I um, podcast on the PSR uh, program about Mighty Ducks with Kevin Mahadeo, who is also a feature on this Twitch stream. So if you're a patron, check it out. And yeah, so Doc is... Uh, She's not uh, 
super friendly. She, so she's a changeling who has been living on her own for quite a while, but her childhood friend who you might be meeting uh, soon is recruited her to be on this mission because she's uh, got a lot of knowledge about a lot of things. So she's going to be helpful on this trip and she's um, kind of tall and slender with long white hair. Uh, but I think more importantly is her uh friend Waffle, who I am very excited for everyone to meet. Uh, so Waffle is a small mechanical dragon uh, who carries around a little torch so that he can fix up the ship whenever things go wrong. And uh, he is my favorite part of this whole thing. So mm-hmm. hopefully you mm-hmm. all like him. Um, I have like desperately wanted to have the like character with the dragon familiar for like my whole life and all my DMs are like, how about no? So I, <laughs> I love that we have a tiny robot dragon. I'm like floored and um, it's going to be probably really useful for uh, a ship in space to have an artificer. Um, yeah, I'm psyched about Doc, and I'm psyched about Waffle, and um, and I'm psyched to have you here, Melissa. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, um, no problem. yeah she's a battlesmith artificer. I probably should have, should have said that, but she's not like, I don't know. She doesn't have a lot of friends, so she had to build her own, is basically I think how this, Aww. and you know why she doesn't have a lot of friends, we'll see as we go. I guess we will. I'm curious to to see <laughs> why. Um, how about the guy in the top right, Josh? Yeah. That's you. We know this guy. Yeah. Tyler Weigert. Tyler <laughs> Weigert. This is oh this is brand new streamer <laughs> making his debut. Uh, Tyler Weigert. It's me, Tyler. <laughs> Hi, I'm jo- I'm Josh. I use he him pronouns. I'm a podcaster. Uh. And I'm the bad man. Uh, the bad man. I shall be. I shall be appearing here in Dragonfly as a character who is presently only known as the bad man. Uh, he is uh, a soul knife rogue, uh, and he is of unknown race. He is of Tasha's custom lineage, which mm-hmm. is interesting. Because it's pretty open, we don't know. With some interesting quirks that come with the with the custom lineage from Tasha's. Um, this is what we know about the bad man. He is some form of ancient assassin who looks like if you took Santa Claus <laughs> and you you stuffed him in a bottle of grape juice, <laughs> and then you poured the grape juice out into a cup. And then you had, and suddenly somehow, like in drinking the grape juice, got like super buff and really athletic. Uh, that's not that, the Santa origin story, you guys. That's what my no. family does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, Canadian that, Santa. That's, yeah, that's, 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 that's what great. they tell us in Canada. That's yeah. how Santa Claus works. Yeah. Yeah. Is he a chubby, agile guy? Santa. No, he's not. He's what? he is he is lithe and lean like me. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so that's that that is the bad. I don't think man. of Santa is. <laughs> That is that is that is the bad man. Uh, as I've written on my character sheet, he's purple Santa Claus, and you're on the naughty list. Me too. Me too. Me too. There's a lot of there's a lot of questions to ask. Some obvious, some less so about the bad man. Uh, and <laughs> quite frankly, we will we will find out about him uh, together. I think there's some room for uh, improv and evolution here. I'm, I'm very excited, including the fact that today, when we got this incredible art from Sean Yannel, uh, everyone was like, "Is he purple?" <laughs> like, <laughs> 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 did, he fall in, did he fall into a tub of, of grape soda? And the answer, I think, we may come to find out is yeah. <laughs> I think it's yes. Mm. <laughs> um, in space, they call grapes juice yeah. marbles. But, juice uh, marbles, yeah. Marbles. We decided on that. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My precious juice marbles. We yeah. didn't really. <laughs> I'm just like beating a dead horse. Huh? No, I, like, I like the juice marbles. I think it's good. Anyway, so that's um, the bad man. I'm Josh. Hi. That's the bad man. He's Josh. You could call him Tyler Weigert. Don't. Um, definitely don't. I don't like don't it. Don't do that. It's I shouldn't bit, say things like that. I'm getting carried away with myself sure. with all this power. I apologize, Tyler. Good. I mean, Josh. It's good. Um, it's good. It's good. That brings us around. How about you, Zed? It's me. Yeah. Um, I'm Zed. I use they, them pronouns. So does my character, Asturias Fry. Um, 
I do a little podcasting. I went to school for theater. Uh, I'm a nanny. <laughs> a career? I don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hanging out. Uh, Asterius Vry <laughs> is a winged tiefling, a star druid um, from the homeworld of the tieflings, who are the ancient people of space. Uh, they have grown up studying the lore and traditions of their people and of like the world that their people were the first to reach. Um, they're very young. This is like their first big adventure. Uh, and they are hoping to live up to um, the like what, what the expectations and like reputation of the tieflings as they take their first trip outside of Mazire. Mazire. That's how we pronounce it, huh? I've been writing it down. That's good. Uh, We need a little cat in the background. St. Louis, Missouri. I love cats. Oh, no. Sorry, sorry, Sam. Sorry. I'm a big cat fan. (laughs) Cat fan. Cat fan. You honestly literally have no idea how much I love cats. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um yeah the tiefling so you're a winged tiefling first of all a which is like tiefling. really fast. i can fly yes uh, and i can, can see fly. in the dark <laughs> you could fly and see in the dark Thank and goodness. you don't even Great need a spaceship idea. um we talked a lot in this like microscope game where we built this history out we like we talked a lot about the history of a couple of different like D races specifically but the tieflings came up very early on as like this really important like formative race for all the rest of like the kind of stellar travelers as it were um so it's really good i think for like our campaign that we have one i'm really psyched and i'm like really hyped about star druids i love a druid i know taylor loves a druid i know there's a couple people out there watching us that love druids i love um, a druid and star druids uh you get to play with the star druid this weekend so you got like first-hand research um yeah, from yeah, aglar I some spells today based on yes. what aglar did and what yes. bram did in our stream last friday <laughs> if only I'm there was the some best. stars out there mm. <laughs> if, if only only if only all uh, the stars are in here <laughs> <laughs> yeah true true story there uh next down the line kurt clark how are you I'm Will, uh, Kurt Clark. Um, the... Who is Will Kurt Clark? Will Kurt Clark. Uh, that's me, I guess. Uh, the the only thing you may know me from is I currently am doing the Top Chef podcast over on Rob Has a Podcast. You may have caught previous things that I talk about, shows that shouldn't exist, and then they end up not existing because I've talked about them. <laughs> Yep, um, yep, that's a fact. You also may know Kurt from all the things that he does here on um, Sunday and Monday nights as um, well. Like, just that, like, I don't know. I don't know. That's a maybe, but um, and loosely tied to um, the shows that I've talked about that uh, never end up going anywhere is I'm playing uh, Jake the Beekeeper. Uh, specifically, Jake is a Swarm Keeper Ranger Turtle, so he looks like a giant turtle or tortoise, or tortle, and um, he is bonded with some nature spirits that take the form of a swarm, most often of a swarm of bees that he keeps uh, in his shell and can release uh, as he needs to. Uh, He has a background in the import-export business. Um, He prefers not to be called a smuggler. And he was that that was in his past, although he was kind of tapped into, I believe um, he's guessing he was he's along here to kind of help with the trade and negotiations on the planets that they go to because they are going to need supplies. The cargo hold is only so big and can only hold so much uh, stock. So uh, he, he can also uh, he has navigators tools and can, uh, you know, nav- and can pilot a, a, a ship as well. Um, probably not his primary skill because there's somebody else who can do that probably better than him who we will get to. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's Jake Doya, Swarm Keeper. 
Jake Doya, Swarm Keeper Turtle. Uh, the bees live in his shell. He's got dope racing stripes down his arms. I'm psyched to have a turtle. I love a turtle. Who doesn't love a turtle, really? But um, the fact that you're playing Jake the Beekeeper, like I've talked to Kurt a lot about this, but I listen to that whole Utopia podcast, and that Jake the Beekeeper will live with me uh, forever. So I'm glad we get to bring him back to life in space because <laughs> that's a bit much um taylor you're up indeed um hello everybody i'm taylor uh i do really nothing of significance but play D. &D. hey um, you're on this channel too stop reading down the I'm broadcasters on my network this is the, this is the <laughs> thing. um i'm super excited for this game so my character um is lux um lux looks half elven she's about like average well not really average right shorter than average like five foot three um chin I length that was kind average of... <laughs> so do i <laughs> um chin length kind of wavy red hair it's a little choppy um fair skin deep blue eyes um she has her leather armor and poofy white sleeves because we're pirates in space, or at least she thinks so. Um, and, uh, yeah, she has her bow and arrow on her back. Uh, her two hand axes strapped to her upper thighs. And uh, she is a, um, what's the official term? Horizon Walker Ranger, which I love my rangers, but I've never played a Horizon Walker, so I'm very excited to dig into it. Um, I am really psyched about the Rise and Walker Ranger. Rise and Walker Rangers appeared in the uh, third edition. I believe they were even in like the Dungeon Master's Guide. They were one of the first prestige classes. But like Rangers, very traditionally like uh, these like woods people, hunters, right? Wilderness explorers or whatever. And uh, the Horizon Walker was based on this idea about a ranger that like wanders the plains and is like moving between all these different parts of the D and D multiverse, traveling from like the Feywild to the Shadowfell to the astral plane uh they have all this kind of sensitivity to portals and stuff um i Tortles. ranger turtles 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 turtle sensitivity yes yeah. i've there's, med there's meds minute. for that Detect <laughs> um i am psyched to have two rangers rangers once upon a time my absolute favorite class like the the single longest i ever played a D, &D character was my ranger for like years and years and years so i got a lot of love for rangers who needs a fighter when you got two rangers you know what i mean down with paladins. That's uh, right. I'm just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 100%. Dave's Who needs that? Don't, don't. Uh, the gods are all anybody, different anyway. It's fine. For anybody who doesn't know me and showed up here randomly because of these wonderful people who like convinced you to come, I'm Rich Filiberto. I am DM Philly. My pronouns are he, him. I uh, play a lot of role playing games. I run Dungeons and Dragons. We play a lot of role playing games on uh, the Post Show Recaps Discord. Go sign up for their Patreon, ten dollars a month. Uh, you can catch me here Sunday, Monday nights. Um, Sunday we're playing City of Mist, just really cool uh, kind of neon noir detective game. Monday nights we're doing like a super traditional kind of D and D campaign uh, for kids from an isolated village, kind of running through the wilderness. And so now I thought it was like, running it was a game in space for, for children for kids. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. What I was like, yeah. Wow, yeah. Taylor, I knew Taylor was younger. Than that, I was gonna say, I mean, I'm on Monday, here on Monday night we're playing for the kids. Um, the they're kids. basically kids. Really? I mean, am I yeah. not a kid? Do I have to like accept? I think uh, we can prove ourselves. No, you do kids. not, Rich. Never let go. My Bad therapist ring. told me something about a Peter Pan complex once, but I I forgot. So oh. anyway, uh, to to that end, uh, more of a hook complex. Yeah, that's probably what it seems like. <laughs> Rufio. Uh, do any of you have any questions? Is there anything that we need to go like over? Generally, or yeah, I mean, so we like could just your feeling big time. Yeah, yeah. you're rich. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'm sure. I mean, I I so earlier today. Uh, I had so many questions for you about like combat and stuff so that I could like come across like relatively competently in playing the character in combat because it's a totally different type of character that I'm than I'm used to playing. Uh, and then I think you assured me, which I repeat in turn to assure anybody else that like we're figuring it out. You know, there's going to be a degree mm -hmm. to which we're about to just figure it out. 
I'm just yep. very hyped for that. I think everyone's characters are super, super cool, and I'm excited to see how you all play them because I think that will, in turn, inform how the rest of us play our characters. Like, I, it should. There's that, like, that's how good, loop, that's how good improv fun. works. Yeah, that'll be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, there's going to be a lot of that just to like circle back before we really like dive into the mix here. Uh, everybody is playing third level characters. I do not want to accidentally kill these people tonight. Um, it still might happen, but nevertheless, you big doubter. <laughs> nevertheless, everybody has third level characters. This is the first time we're playing. We have not done any dry runs before we walked in tonight. So we're all learning. Ask questions. And I uh, think through it. <laughs> yes. We have a lot of spellcasters. Star druid, nature cleric, artificers. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be all good. Uh we've all like played D before. We'll figure it out. Like take your time. For like all of you here, like don't worry about it. We're learning. We're playing D D. Like part of the exercise here. This isn't like some edited um podcast or whatever. It's an actual play. Like we're playing, right? We're just sitting here to play, and this is how it goes. You figure it out as you like dig into it and begin playing it. So I guess to that end. We should just start playing, huh? Hey, uh... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Let's play. So, oh I God. think... I think as the scene opens, the camera opens on the void of space, and we see that kind of bluish-black, velvety tapestry, the pinpricks of stars all around us, some glimmering, some pulsing, some dancing ever so slightly, Uh, the myriad of colors so subtle amongst them, some of them bluish-green, some reddish-orange, some with that kind of effervescent uh, pinkish-purple glow kind of radiating off of them, and uh, uh, the camera kind of kind of pans through this empty void, a sight that would be familiar to all of us, something that we in the modern age of this world have all seen before. But for the seven crew of the Dragonfly, many of you have never seen anything like this. And I believe as the camera kind of turns slowly, uh, taking in this kind of silent, quiet, uh, scene around you it finally settles on the ship uh built by your benefactor your patron uh the mysterious figure named yavana uh it is shaped like its name would indicate as a dragonfly four kind of legs thin metal tendrils extending from the bottom of it wings raised up out of the back these kind of glass like Uh, panels in a rounded front with a long wooden deck leading back along the thin tail of what would be this dragonfly. It is a single mast rising up into the void of space. There's no sail unfurled on it. There's a large ballista mounted there, built of wood and metal, mounted on a kind of pivoting platform. And I think that um, as the camera takes in the sight of the ship trailing silently through the void, um, I think that it continues be- like moving around the ship itself. And we see these massive, massive creatures. Uh, and I would imagine all of you within the ship itself, you see them through the the various portholes and kind of windshields on the front of your vessel. Uh, They are enormous. They dwarf the ship that you sail in. Um, They appear to be kind of moving in a circle, and they are like whales, Uh, these massive, like, hulking kind of creatures that you would know are called kinduri, the space whales. They have no mouths, but the front of their faces, the kind of same sort of grayish mottled rough skin. Um, and on the front of their head where a mouth would be are just a series of small eyes that are kind of glowing, emitting this bluish light out of them. And you could see that they're kind of trailing, following each other in this circle almost as you watch from within the ship. 
and they suddenly they they break off they scatter kind of moving in multiple directions and then regrouping into this big pod where they kind of begin moving off into the void and you see that they were circling around what appears to be a uh, a dead kinduri that floats kind of lifeless in this void. It's obvious that it's not alive because huge like sections of it are missing, have been kind of chewed out and eaten. We see these massive white rib cage bones and we can see ever so slightly movement on them. Um, and I think as you all kind of watch these space whales that appear to be like uh, mourning one of their kin break away, it's, uh, it's the fallen Kinduri that the camera zooms in on. And there are all manner of kind of space parasites working their way along the body. And I think we see a number of them suddenly detach and they begin floating away from this carcass towards the dragonfly to intercept this tiny vessel as it moves cutting silently through the void and I think that some of you can like see through the windows those of you who are watching this closely these small kind of amorphous shapes moving closer towards the ship and one of them begins to take form as you recognize it is much larger than the ones around it uh, bright pink this kind of glistening sheen over it it blinks and you realize it has this kind of massive eyeball in the center of it and these slimy kind of viscous tentacles emerging off of the top of it with many other eyeballs and as it begins like moving towards the ship it is slow but it is clear it is about to intercept you floating around it are a series of these kind of oozing just jellies almost floating along almost like jellyfish what flavor <laughs> not grape <laughs> Uh, and so I think as we have taken in this sight, the camera kind of zooms, it, it's kind of moved out, taken in this sort of mass of these alien entities, and then it zooms back into the ship and kind of smashes through the wall into the cabin where we see the seven of you. Uh, what's going on in there? Um, Jake is looking at these jellies. Are these oozes? Indeed, they are oozes. <laughs> well, Jake the turtle's favorite enemy is, of course, the ooze. <laughs> um, so, uh, can uh, he make an intelligence check with uh, advantage uh, to to see what he can recall about these? You're goddamn right, he can. <laughs> <laughs> First roll of the camp. Let's do it. I With think, advantage. Come on. Uh, okay, just making sure you, you have advantage on wisdom survival checks to track them, and in, as well as on intelligence checks to recall to information. Recall so information. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, no. I think Lux is yelling like, "Who's is off the port side?" <laughs> Eleven. Uh, this is an important oh, no. note. Um, in the in the kind of. Uh, the cabin of the ship, this front cabin, there are these big, they're almost like would be the eyes of the dragonfly. Uh, these big kind of glass like portholes is like the windshield in the front. And centered in the middle of this area is this big kind of wooden and, and stone and metal like a seat, the spell jammer helm, which pilots this ship. Now, the ship can move of its own accord with none of you piloting it, um, but it moves slowly. And I think that probably none of you were driving it as you were all kind of watching uh, this pod of space whales. Um, and as Lux begins yelling, Who's this off the port side? Jake, you've rolled an 11. What you know, what you can see as we, you, we see Jake's turtle face lean up to this glass-like window, um, they are ochre jellies, uh, highly dangerous to your ship, as it were, because an ochre jelly uh, is highly acidic and can uh, melt through wood quite easily. Uh, 
whoever is like in the vicinity um, will say, well, this isn't good. We've got some ochre jellies off the side of the ship and they can eat through wood pretty quickly. We better be getting out of here now. Then let's go! <laughs> I, I think, I think uh, Ray would be like pretty closely attached to Jake on the sh- like so however long they've been hanging. Like, Ray's not like in his bit, but like not really get letting Jack, Jake get out of sight, sort of. So Ray's been sort of like reading <laughs> from her like book uh, about uh, it's a book about Clancy, obviously, and like but like actually of sort of watching yeah. Jake, and then um, was watching the whales, but now is like gonna spring up like, oh yeah, what do we what do we gotta do, Jake? What do we gotta do? Go faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go. <laughs> Go faster away. <laughs> oh, wait. I think that it's at this point that any of the rest of you are looking, you realize that this big, like, tentacled eye mass is kind of directing the herd of these things. And I think that you see kind of, like, emerging up from behind it uh, what look like these, like, brains with this kind of nasty yellowish bird beak and these like spiked tentacles kind of oh, like <laughs> merging from the bottom of it. and they're like all kind of surging towards the ship they're moving very quickly uh they're about to intercept you what would you like to do can okay so can lux like pop in the driver's seat um you could pop into the driver's seat for sure uh lux make an intelligence check okay Oh boy, intelligence to say. Yeah, it's a stream right here, right now. You guys could all X guard me, by the way. Uh, I didn't yeah, give this speech, but like, please X guard me. Uh, I spent all day thinking about brains. No, no more brains. <laughs> brains. Um, brains. What do Melissa Woodward and zombies have in common? Brains. It's brains. Just brains. straight intelligence. <laughs> yes. Just straight intelligence. Mm-hmm. Okay. You Great. are not going to be able to get away fast enough. By the time that you like strap yourself into the spell jammer's helm and get this thing moving, they're going to be on the ship. All right, yeah, she's she's still yelling. She's very excitable. They're gonna they're gonna intercept us. We can't get away. Two arms, two arms. Uh, and I think at this point, Reginald looks up from the book he's been reading, and and says, uh, Two arms. Yes, I have two arms. Do you also have two arms? I believe that's the case. I, go. I think he yeah. just kind of looks around and says, "Oh goodness!" Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> he has no other tactical preparation other than that. <laughs> that's all we need. That's all we need. Um. Okay. What do you guys want to do? They are now like approaching very close to the ship. Do we have? Can we fire things? out of the ship somehow? Do we yes. have weapons? Yeah, do yes. we have You have all your weapons. You have all your equipment. Uh, there's an upper deck to the ship. There are two kind of uh, cargo ports that open to like the upper deck from the cargo bay in the back. Um, there is also like a ladder that you can climb up to like emerge out into the front from the interior cabin. You guys can, in fact, uh, spell jammer ships. Uh, all things in the space of our space carry with them a pocket of air. Your ship has this pocket of air around it sufficient to keep the seven of you alive for months, for probably eight months, you would think, uh, if, if it's just the seven of you. Um, so you can, in fact, go and, and stand out on the deck of the ship uh, in the midst of space. And I think that the jellies um, like are about to slap onto the thing. Uh, perhaps should we just roll initiative? Well, yes, oh. I think... I, I wanted to know if um if if it would be possible mm-hmm. to roll a stealth check. Absolutely, it would. <laughs> of course, it would, Batman. What are you a rogue or something? <laughs> Twenty. <laughs> you all Follow, look around. Oh, <laughs> <Rex Jennings. laughs> it's the universe. It so is the, the universe. So, as wow. we are cutting through the stars. Uh, 
the bad man stands atop the mast of the dragonfly alone save for his companion the furry sweet little kitty cat jeffrey the bad man what? stands scritching jeffrey underneath the chin i told you i'd show you the world jeffrey but this part i have to do alone jeffrey meows and paws at the bad man's face at his mouth knowing what must be done next and jeffrey climbs and claws his way as the bad man's mouth opens wide ah and jeffrey climbs into the mouth and is swallowed whole by the bad man swallowed whole wait say that again <laughs> swallowed <laughs> you ate a cat Joshua. are you a flurkin Swallowed whole <laughs> by the bad man. Oh, Jeffrey the cat climbs inside yeah. to find safety. The as the bad real man name is indeed, Chewy. As the bad man shall now stand atop the mast, silently waiting, ready for battle. Okay. Wow. That's horrifying. Not great. Everyone, Josh is like, I hope this has a lot of whimsy. And he's like, I'll <laughs> eat a cat. <laughs> that will be whimsical if I eat a cat. <laughs> to note that the, the cat clawed and in, uh, crawled inside the bad man's mouth. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. You didn't eat a cat. The cat's choice. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh boy! Um, I am sorry, guys, that Nightbot is harassing you in the chat. I definitely <laughs> uh, will tweak the settings for next week. In like a very specific way of like trying to read people in the process. I know it's really nasty. I apologize. I did not get all my Nightbot settings mastered yet. I'm learning too. <laughs> I just hate that it's like specifically attacking people that are here every week. I'm like, geez, this is this is horrible. I see Jake. I see. Well, Doc. maybe they stop like using. You. In, uh, caps and symbols. Right. <laughs> it's true. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Uh, whose initiative am I missing? I don't see the Badman in here. The Badman. The Badman. Badman. The Badman. Badman. Um, now, the viewers cannot see this map, but you guys can see the map. These uh, little squares in front of you, these rectangles of dotted lines, those are the cargo holds upstairs. The Badman is up on the upper deck. That is the mast. Uh, this is where the ballista is. Here are creatures coming. The ochre jelly slaps into the side of the ship. Uh, okay. We got the Badman. It's happening. Can I, like, when when Jake told us to go, we told Ray to go, I feel like I would have went towards the thing. Can, am I going to be here or can I be? You can position yourselves wherever you would like right now. I'll let you guys, like, adjust yourselves. Seven, so I see there, everybody in chat. There are cargo doors above us? Yeah, they're, yeah, so like, essentially, like. If you like, go into the, uh, the, the, the dotted lines, then you go up to number three above you. Correct, yeah. Amondo. Um, so you guys can just put gotta, yourselves on the upper deck. We gotta be upstairs in order to like fight, right? Yes, yeah. you're like inside okay. the ship now. So yeah, you probably want to go upstairs. Um, I going... got up. That's what I like... thought, but I was just making sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, if Doc is anywhere near Lux, Lux like grabs her and is like, "Come on, let's go." <laughs> yeah, I was thinking like as the oozes are coming, Doc is like shit, 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 and just like. <laughs> running like talking to herself being like this is a good this is bad this is bad <laughs> <laughs> this is bad this is bad this is bad on 20 jake doya goes jake what would you like to do uh you all come like like dashing up the ladders right the cargo doors like open dropping down into the bottom of the ship you guys race up the ladder onto the deck right the the dragonfly itself kind of cruising along and you see this massive eye tentacled creature these two like beaked grell flying out in front of it and the ochre jelly hits the side of the ship next to you jake you're up um do I know anything about what a uh, like any immunities of this of the ochre jelly? Uh, what did you roll before? Like eleven. 11? Make another roll. Make another roll right here. 
So you would know the basics about jellies that like they're immune to a lot of conditions, right? They can't, <laughs> they can't be wow. like, uh, you don't, you don't remember the specific damage types that ochre jellies have resistances to, but you do know like all oozes, like, you know, you can't blind them. You can't charm them. You can't knock them prone or scare them. Okay. Right. Is it within missile range from me standing on the deck here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Jake is going to draw his longbow and he pulls back the string. And as he does, some bees emerge from his shell and kind of spiral along the shaft of the arrow and he lets it fly at the ochre jelly. And he hits a C- whoa. Holy Whoa. cow, that was a lot of rolls. I, it, I, <laughs> it appeared in the chat before I even clicked it. That was so bizarre. Uh, but it let's knew. go with the first one. Uh, AT, AC 18? Yeah, hits. Uh, so the arrow does 11 points of piercing damage, and the bees, the bees! The bees, do, Jake. The bees! <laughs> the bees do three points of piercing damage to the uh, jelly. So 14 piercing total. Amazing. Do we see the arrow like hit this thing and like this ochre jelly kind of like sprays up off of it uh, as it takes 14 points of damage? Uh, Jake, that was your action. You have movement and a bonus action. Um, Jake will move a little bit closer towards the bow of the ship. Okay. And I uh, believe Jake is done. Just to be clear, Jake, right next to you is this ballista, um, which is probably like strapped in kind of the stowed position or whatever and like bolted down. But yeah, this is a, a ballista, like a giant crossbow, just so you all are aware here. And with that, Doc, you are up. Um, and for the sake of just like clarity, we can have Waffle go on your turn rather than having you roll separate initiatives. Unless you prefer yeah. it, in which case you could. No, I think that's how it, like, yeah, it's that's what I was go. expecting. Yeah. It was Waffle goes after me. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so how do I get outside of this ship? Is that, like... You are outside the ship now. Outside. Like, you're standing on, like, an open deck, right? Like, the, the, the front of the Dragonfly is, like, this hull. The interior is the cabin. And then there's this whole, like, very classic kind of ship's deck running across the top of it. Gotcha, gotcha. So I can shoot this, like giant creepy thing in front of yeah, me. Yeah, you could yeah. shoot that big eye <laughs> creature for sure. Okay, yeah. So I think, um, you know, the moment that the call went up and, and you know, Lux grabs Doc and, and she's running uh, and she is like fiddling with all of the things that she's got and she's gonna tell Waffle to like be safe little buddy you got this uh and she's gonna tell him to take an attack with her bonus action Mm -hmm. uh and then she's gonna shoot it with her longbow nice uh yeah now that you all run out onto the deck of the ship you get like a good look at this thing it's really ugly scary looking the eyes like kind of milky white it almost looks like blind that's a critical one brutal Uh. brutal uh, yeah. I love to break people's bowstrings when they were all critical ones, but I can't do it now. Uh, I think that you like fire and like this is the first shot that you've taken in space. And so the <laughs> arrow probably goes like wildly. I, Turns out gravity not... might be a critical for bow and arrow physics. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I think as the arrow, like, breaks out of the air bubble around the ship and gets into, like, the open gravity, it's like, right, cartwheels away. That's your action, Doc. Yeah, so bonus action, uh, telling Waffle to go attack the same creature in front of me. Or, sorry, telling Waffle, I'm Doc. You got it. You are Doc. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, You can move Waffle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so Waffle is going to fly up uh, and is going to um, take an attack on the thingy, and that is a 23 to hit, because wow. Waffle is much cooler than I am. Waffle is a beast. Right. Waffle's awesome. Yeah. That was on the ooze? Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead and sorry, roll some damage. Too many things open right now. No, you're fine. There we go. Uh... 
same deal, just like your attacks, right? Yeah, you got oh. it. Um, <laughs> For three damage, because he is still a very tiny dragon. He is a little but tiny dragon. But he's trying dragon. really hard, and that's what matters. Uh, what does it look like as he attacks this ooze? Like, how does he attack? Yeah, so um, I think Waffle fl- flies up, and he's using his tail to, like, whip at um, the ooze in front of him. So he's trying to um, kind of whip attack him t- got you know, it plus, we see plus him, a like, tail whip move yeah he comes like wow. flying up in like this big spin the tail like you know whip lashing around and like smashing into the suit ripping a bit of it off uh awesome doc that was your action that's waffle you want to move anything like that you good no we're good the badman you're up on 14 the badman is hiding atop the the mast is in full stealth mode, correct? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> He's invisible. Uh, uh, hiding from atop the mast, maybe just like a speck of dust in his uh, his uh, his sparkly purple form, blending in with the uh, the greater expanse. Um, he is going to his hand is going to glow a, uh, like a, a lighter uh, shade of purple, and it shall form the shape of a dagger, a psychic blade that you will then launch out like a battering rang, batarang, badman rang, uh, out to this creature that we are all choosing to attack right now. This, uh, this thing that looks like a toffee pudding monster. I don't know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like something so out of if you land. don't it know is. Josh, if you don't know Josh, uh, his commitment to a bit is unparalleled. All right, I'm going to roll a psionic die. Hold on, because you are attacking from stealth, you have advantage. So that's a 19 rather than the 9. So we see this purple psychic blade, like, lance away from the top of the mast. Uh, And you were going for the big eye guy or the little ones? I'm sorry. uh, Got it. No, the one that that everyone is, uh, the toffee pudding guy. The pudding, toffee pudding. Toffee pudding, man. Yeah. Got it. For four points of psychic damage, we need to see this guy fight a robot that I know. Um, (laughs) Ooh, a battle for the ages. Hardcore. Um, Uh, And with advantage, I believe, that uh, enables him to sneak attack as well. Indeed it does. Heck yeah. Get that sneak attack on. Seven. So that's that's for uh, 11 points of of damage. Um, The Badman will then... uh, like a like a Ghostbuster at Ghostbusters HQ. I don't know why I didn't go with a a, a, a fireman at a firehouse, but we'll <laughs> sl- slide down the mast anyway, like a Ghostbuster. Like mm-hmm. a Ghostbuster. Yeah, yeah. Like Ghostbusters what city? Would the, what awesome. city is that firehouse in? Just so uh, we can't. We can't. Uh, oh, we can't. Okay. We don't can't do it. That. Don't we do it. Do it. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll we'll slide down and crouch in the corner of the upper deck. And hide there. As a bonus action, uh, Rogue yes. using this cunning action, go ahead and make another stealth check. Dirty nice. 20. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, wow. The Badman, like, drops down, uh, sliding into the ship, and then, like, rolls into Disappears the Disappears into the dark, the dark night shadows. The dark night shadows. The Badman. Uh, okay, this jelly... Oh, wow. I think it kind of like pulls itself up onto the deck of the ship a little bit oh. like this. And uh, this like pseudopod is just like, like, like lances out of it. And I think it's going to have to attack Waffle. I can't believe the first attack roll is against a tiny dragon. <laughs> but oh. Waffle's like right there on him and beating on him and stuff. And I think it's just like uh, first come, first serve. Big meanie. I know, I'm a oh, total oh, jerk. Oh. Uh, yeah. Come on, dragon, <laughs> fly! Come on. That's 21. <laughs> Waffle uh, gets smashed by yeah. this pseudopod and proceeds to take four points of bludgeoning damage and five acid as this thing is like... <laughs> um, and it's like Waffles slowly crawling over the ship. The ship, you see it like... <laughs> melting away and kind of burning underneath it as the acid is like starting to erode the decking and fabric of your ship. That's the ochre jelly on 10. On 9, uh, these kind of horrific looking brains with the tentacles, they uh, come rolling in towards you. 
Right. I think one of them is going to come floating up easily here onto uh, poor Jake. Uh, they are flying 30 feet, right, 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 right. And I think one of them, like, comes flying over Jake and, like, drops down in here next to the ochre jelly and is going to go for Rhea, who's up here in the front. Uh, sorry, Rhea. So, I'm just double-checking. Uh, okay, for Jake, it, like, lances at you with these kind of tentacles. 15, 15 does that hit? is a miss. Um, so we see the kind of tentacle like crack into Jake's shell to no avail. And then it's got like this horrific beak on the front of it. And it lances forward and tries to grab a hold of you, Jake for eight is another miss. Um, the one that comes up onto you, Ray is going to basically do the same thing. It lances at you with the beak, like snapping 16, no dice. Uh, and the tentacle, 23 that's a hit huh it's, yeah. okay ray i need you to make a constitution saving throw you take 10 points of piercing damage and uh you feel oh boy ray, mm -hmm. you are poisoned which means mm -hmm. you are paralyzed while you are poisoned by the scroll poison you may repeat the saving throw at the end of your next turn or um, so we see like this, the tentacle, like snap into Rhea and there are these kind of spikes, these almost needles on the end of its spines. And I think one of them like kind of breaks off and you guys see Rhea's like powerful fur bulk form kind of like freeze up. Um, and she is kind of frozen standing rigid in front of this creature. Rhea, I'm really sorry. It is your turn. You can make another saving throw. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh. brutal, Rhea. Dice have turned against you, Grace. Uh, you are unfortunately still poisoned, which means you're paralyzed. Uh, Professor Reginald, you're up on seven. Yeah, so I think uh, I think that Reginald uh, is climbing up onto the hole. That's why he's a little low on the initiative order. He's just kind of getting up there, and he kind of... Okay. <clears throat> oh, goodness. Uh, yes. Uh, well, I guess we should start where she, we always do. And I think he looks at the ochre jelly and uh, uh, says, uh, I believe I heard someone refer to you as a sticky toffee pudding. Sticky that's toffee. Not, that's not possible. You couldn't possibly get a date. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he's going to cash this is vicious mockery. <laughs> Uh, so that is a wisdom save of uh, 14. Okay, good choice. It, it, ooh, it's not incredibly wise. It fails. It takes four points of psychic damage. We're and, just psyching this guy out. Uh, mm -hmm. It has disadvantage on its next attack roll before the end of its next turn. Got it. Great. As uh, the ooze is psyched out by the mocking of Professor Reginald Frybottom. Uh, Reggie, that was your action. You got a bonus action? Anything else? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I just I turned to I think that's Asturias next to me. And mm -hmm. I say, uh, as you can see, the, the, the word is mightier than the bullet. And I think he's, <laughs> he's part the word is mightier than the bullet. Yes, um, as, they, as they always say. There's a common phrase. <laughs> Classic thing. Well, we talked I mean, that through a lot when we were building out phrases. We did, yeah. It's a very <laughs> common space phrase. Yeah, it was yeah. along with the uh, juice marbles. <laughs> yeah. And so with that, Asturias Fry, you are up. Okay. Um, can I... This is definitely like a DM call because I want to use ice knife, but then all my friends are right by the dude. But can I ice knife at the far side of the toffee pudding? You can fly. So I will say, oh, that should you choose to fly <laughs> to like get the vertical angle so that you can uh, utilize the science of Pythagorean from the far dimension oh, and like drop down on like the angle, you could totally do that. Sure. Great. Uh, I can fly. Oh boy, I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. fly, okay. Wait a great, what a great yeah, thing. Um. Woo. Okay. Well, I can't fly that far. Uh, no, but like, even if you just like kind of fly up, you know what I mean? If you get enough oh, like vertical sure. height, you would be able to like fire down into the backside of it. Great. So let's say I'm flying. Mm -hmm. Let's say <laughs> I'm flying, and now I am going to cast ice knife at the toffee pudding 
Jason universe. You're killing me, Kurt. Uh, go for it. Ice knife this pudding. I'm just waiting for it to go, but but we're going. Attack roll. Uh, twelve hits. It's a it's a giant oh, pudding. Nice. Come on, yeah. It's a giant pudding. <laughs> uh, amazing. Good. We also see, incredible uh, that it was a twelve and a twenty four. It is uh, pretty wild. Okay. Uh, what knife. does your ice knife look like, Asturias? Uh, so from up in the air, I th- we see. You know, glimmering, uh, like, it, I think it looks like a bunch of stars have come together into this, like, piercing shard that shoots down from the air <laughs> into the pudding. Um, yeah, from up, from up. I usually air. use a spoon with, for my pudding, but. <laughs> 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 sure. um, it's going to make a saving throw against the, so we see, like, the ice, like, like just like rip down into the mass of the pudding and then it like erupts from inside and that's 18 points of damage yes. wow which is in fact yeah enough. so now the pudding is like glittering the pudding is because vaporized the, I, because the ice you vaporized is... the yeah, pudding. yeah you, yeah, you vaporized oh, yeah. the pudding so i think we see like glittering pieces of pudding kind of floating off into the void of space as this pudding is like completely uh obliterated by this ice knife these little like frozen chunks of toffee pudding like floating away as the ship kind of it's moving very slowly kind of crawling along through the void that was your action you have a uh, bonus action a little bit of movement Mm-hmm. I think Asturias is like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> um, and then they're going to turn into their starry form as an Whoa. archer. Whoa. So what now they're a starry constellation and like? they're flying. This is hot. <laughs> wow. What does the constellation look like? Do you like entirely like kind of uh, transform? In In my brain, yeah. Yeah, now I am an archer constellation glittering in the sky. <laughs> uh, so we I'm see happy. I can this, die happy. Don't this me. like starry Don't mirror. Me. Yeah, and I'm um, paralyzed, so we're all having fun. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Uh, I am having fun. I am having fun. <laughs> Lux, you are up on, on five. five. Glittering in the sky. Uh, I'm done. <laughs> So, yeah, I think Lux being at the end of initiative, she made sure everybody got up first and then mm-hmm. climbed up herself. Damn right. Um, so we see this other thing floating out in space. Yeah, it's just floating there. Yep. Does she recognize what it is? Make an arcana check. You know what? Make a survival check. Your uh, Lux's background is such that you might have uh, uh, dealt with these types of things before as um, they exist in the void. And so this is a mind witness. Uh, It is a kind of um, derivation of the beholders. And it is, in fact, this giant psychic monstrosity uh, that can fire a whole series of beams from the multiple, like, eye stalks that it has. Um, And it has, like, this powerful ability to kind of meld groups of minds together as a sort of telepathic hub. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Mm, Yeah, Taylor hates these things. (laughs) (laughs) I think they're absolutely disgusting. Um. I think you and, and I haven't done that one. Uh, it's just you. <laughs> just me. Just me. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Lux also dislikes them very much. So she points. It's like, the witness. And she just pulls her longbow. And uh, first we'll cast Hunter's Mark. Because that's what you do when you're a ranger. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you remember it. I mean, uh, this is already oh, next rolling, level. I, that that rolling is rolling damage, not popping. That's the okay. Chest. The hunter's mark is up. We got it yep. on the mind witness, obviously. Longbow. Pew. Oh, oh yeah. Hey now. Uh, for seven points of damage, you want to use that hunter's mark, and four yeah. is eleven. And what about uh your crazy Horizon Walker stuff? I, I don't. Think- 
I think on your first hit of a round, you get to do a thing. Am I... Then it's it seems Planer to be as warrior. a bonus action. Oh my bad, you're right. I just want to double check. Um, okay, so you like uh, the arrow like smashes into it. It takes eleven points of damage. We see this like milky white eye in the center like blink as the thing like recoils. The tentacles kind of like pull down in around it. The skin like wrinkling and then it like opens back up and it is staring at you, Lux. And I think it's at this stage all of you here in your mind this very cold voice you must be cleansed <laughs> we are here to retrieve the orb there is no surrender jake doya you're up on 20 uh i think that that's your turn you still have movement locks if you want to move around anyway. um i think that no she's gonna stay next to doc and also, just you notice that her bow um, is wrapped in like dark blue, like for her grip, and it has kind of Ooh. like white, like sprinkle, like on it, like it's like almost okay. like hand painted, like stars. Okay. Um, so these two growl are like still kind of right up on top of the ship. Um, Jake, you're up. Um, Jake will drop his longbow and he reaches she kind of reaches back on his shell <laughs> but he's done it, he's done it enough times where he knows like he Somewhere, knows it's back right? there and he grabs like this huge war and he starts kind of like swinging the warhammer like just in his hand not like on a cord or anything but he's just like winding up Hello! Um, yeah yeah you, those who are near hear a faint buzzing sound, and you can kind of see again bees swarming around the the head of the hammer, the hammer it's head. Like a, it's a bee hammer. Wow, <laughs> the swarm every, every, hammer. Everything yes. is a bee thing with with him. It's like it's the bad I am so excited. <laughs> and he uh, swings, guy, <laughs> swings at the grill, and most likely misses with an AC eleven. Yes, uh, you do, unfortunately. Okay. Um, uh, yep. He will... Um, nope, that's an action. That's a bonus action. Mm. We love those. We love a bonus action. <laughs> uh, no, but I'm good. I don't need that right now. I can cast it later. Uh, Jake okay. Okay. is done. Famous last words. Jake's done? Yeah, he's done. Oh, cool. Jake is done. The mind witness is now going to act <laughs> because it's been like actively attacked and it's not having no. this garbage anymore. So it proceeds to fire a series of eyes, of beams at you, I should say. I think it's going to shoot one for uh, Jake, who just shot it. Wait, he didn't shoot the mind witness. Or, or he didn't. The... I'm sorry. Uh, Lux. Fair enough. Fair enough. Two brutal Lux. I need you to make a uh, DC thirteen wisdom saving throw. Oh. <laughs> Hundred and twenty feet. No. Oh, incredible! Uh, yep, it's pretty horrific. Uh, oh no! It. Oof, okay, you are frightened, um, which basically means you have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks, and you can't move closer to the source of your fear while is it, it is in sight. So you're kind of like locked up right here where you're standing. Um, you'll remember that for me. It then fires a second beam at you. Uh, oh. I need you to make a uh, strength saving throw at disadvantage. Uh, Lux again? Wow. Yeah. It does oh, not Taylor. mess around. It does not no. mess around. No, this is me not like playing gently. I'm sorry. Uh, you <laughs> nope. weigh less Good. than 300 pounds, I <laughs> yep. presume, right? Oh, Indeed. You okay, shot it, like, at me. Uh, yeah, I think it like. <laughs> well, what plan are you on? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, there's extremely high gravity on the ship. Uh, she actually does wait for her. We don't comment on it. I think Lux, it picks you mm -hmm. up and it throws you off yeah. the ship. Yeah. 
Um, it you just see Lux like, <laughs> and suddenly like she, her, like her arms like go rigid as this telekinetic force like grabs you, <gasps> and you're just like thrown woof, off the side <laughs> of the ship like, <laughs> and then I think from there it like focuses back onto probably Jake who's in the front of the line and uh, last beam. I love things with random eye beams. Three, uh, I need you to make a DC 13 intelligence saving throw. Why oh. did it have to be intelligence? Why not to me? <laughs> Why did it have to be snakes? The smart, heavy one in the bag. Oh, is like, yes. oh Jake, 19. you're so smart. Jake, yeah, you're baby. really intelligent. I knew it. Boy. I knew he was so smart. Why? Jake, you take seven points of psychic damage as it just blasts you with this psychic ray. We see, I'm not like articulating it well, ray? but like from, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, from all these little like eye stalks, like, like these beams are shooting out of them. And uh, this like ray just rolls out of it and, and smashes in you. You take seven points of psychic damage, Jake. That is its turn. Doc, you're up on 15. Oh gosh. Okay. There's a lot of things happening all of a sudden. <laughs> there sure is. Um, okay, so Lux is floating in space. I assume I can, yeah. can't just like and go get her. <laughs> you can't, okay. but I mean, you have a buddy who can. Um, are there the life ideas, preservers that... along the edge of the ship? <laughs> <laughs> we forgot to install those. Yes, <laughs> you sure did. Yavana did not equip you properly. Yeah, it's unsinkable. Uh, I think it's the issue... fine. <laughs> The issue is like the ship is moving along slowly and like it's got you're gonna leave her behind. I'm you know not. I mean? like, okay. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna go get you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> as soon as possible. I'm coming. <sighs> okay. Um then I think I'm just gonna go up to this thing in front of Rhea. Uh and I've kind of dropped my longbow and I'm kind of pulling out my battle axe and I'm going to hit it two handed because battle I am axe. Okay. very mad that Waffle has been attacked. My <laughs> friends have been attacked or, you know, the people I know. Could you move one more get space it, and have advantage? BFF? You could. Yeah. If you step yes, up on sorry, the I stairs, you can flank yes, with Waffle. You. No problem. Uh, so we see Doc, like, looking out at Lux, like, uh, and, and I think that, like, glancing back, uh, you see, like, the glowing constellation that is, like, your flying tiefling compatriot, and they're like, okay, uh, and the axe, like, woof, swings off your back as you come racing forward up the stairs. You've got the high ground. Uh, go for it. You can attack. Yes. Oh, 13. 13. Hits. Hits. Okay. <laughs> uh, for 12. 12. 12 points of slashing damage Lux in uh, this like solid side hand chop the axe like cleaves into the side of this thing I think that like you sever one of the tentacles right off it like falls to the deck of the ship writhing around that's your action you have a bonus action yeah for my bonus action I'm going to uh, be like I'm going to shout at Waffle like fix yourself uh, and so Waffle is going to do the repair action on his turn. Nice. Um, and so he kind of takes out his little torch and starts like fusing it around, like fixing all of the spots where maybe he started to come apart from his um, previous hit. I so, love it. Uh, fix yourself. Fix yourself. I don't know what I just typed. Uh, 2d8 plus 2. Yeah. Uh, can I click? No. Uh, okay. We will do this quickly. <laughs> Uh, I'll add it to your sheet. What, yeah. what did you type? <laughs> I had a message in there and put another one in the middle. I'm notoriously bad typist. Madox, All of you know this. Madox, Madox. I said, is it too much? Badass, that I was trying to write like, Doc's badass. Basically, sorfers. That's what I wrote, sorfers, Grace. Sorfers. I'm, I'm a notoriously <laughs> terrible typist, and I'm multitasking. Uh, <laughs> okay, Doc. Waffle has been healed for nine health. Yay. Okay, waffle. excellent. Can you excellent, uh, have excellent. like a chamber that Waffle and is called the waffle iron uh, <laughs> oh well yeah that's a great idea we can that's workshop great. that offline melissa yeah yeah we're gonna have to we're gonna have to we're gonna oh, have this to. home is the waffle well, that, that is what waffle is made out waffle of house. correct it's yeah. iron. Waffle house. Iron. Yeah. Waffle. that was pretty good yeah. uh that's doc that's waffle is that your turn melissa yeah uh i think um 
yeah, I think Waffle's going to stay where he is, and I'm going to stay where I am, so we're good. Okay, and with that, the Badman, you're up. All right, so I think as uh, the Badman watches the toffee pudding monster get vaporized, he, like, holds out a hand uh, gesturing towards, like, the uh, one of, like, the passing chunks of toffee pudding. He can't quite reach it, and he sighs to himself, and he's going to say, I guess I'll have to always wonder what that tasted like. Uh, <laughs> he will then uh, uh, produce uh, another psychic blade, which he will just sort of like, you know, flicker out at this creature that is standing in front of Jake the Turtle, uh, which I believe I have advantage on because I am uh, coming out Stealthed, of stealth. Indeed. Yes. Yeah, so Coming out. out of All stealth. Right. Of stealth. So that's a 22. 22 hits. Okay. For six psychic damage plus a sneak attack. So that's Eight. nine. That's uh, 15 points of damage. 15 as the psychic blade plunges into the back of this growl. And I think it's like... <laughs> like wheeling around looking at you. The beak like... <laughs> How does it look? Uh, you know, mostly fine. Mostly He's got fine. two eyes. Hmm. Mostly fine. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. uh, all right. Well, as he does that, um, the badman, he is gonna uh, check some roll twenty ish, real quick. Um, the badman is going to launch another off-handed psychic blade at this thing that he just attacked. Oh, nice. A second psychic blade fires off your hand. Uh, and I'm nope, going to use miss. A, a psionic die. Yes. To, to do this. I, ex- I have psionic die that adds, that stacks onto my, onto my rolls. So that's going to be an 11. It's still a miss. It sucks, Sorry. to be honest. That does you. suck. <laughs> that does suck. To be honest. If I, I just <laughs> figure I should probably be uh, pretty transparent about how I'm feeling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they've got 30 movement. Hmm, it's not great, huh? Okay, so this is not to be annoying, but just to be annoying, uh, you can only use your psionic dice on ability checks, so you didn't actually have to spend it right there. You just missed anyway. You still oh, have your great. Extra psionic well, that's not dive. so bad. I'm happy. So it sucks less, right? It does suck a little bit less. Yeah, all right. That's good. Uh, I'll take it. I'm going to uh, move to this side of the ship uh, and just like kind of like... Um, I think the Badman thinks that he's being really, really stealthy after he's done that. And he just like sort of like uh, belly flops and slides onto like the deck of the ship and just decides to like stay absolutely still, thinking that nobody saw him do that. But probably everybody saw him do that because this is not a stealth check. I don't have that option available to me right now. Okay, so the Badman's secret identity is Drax the Destroyer. That is your turn. Yep. And now Grell is up on yep. nine. The Grell go, this one is going to go for my man, Jake the Beekeeper. Uh, Jake is going to give you the beak. 18? 19 with shield. Whoa! Oh! Yes. 14. Not today, beak. Nope. Not the <laughs> eight beak. I think the thing beak like comes keeper. in going to like uh, like snap at you with the beak and you batter the shield away. Uh, you batter it away with the shield. You see the tentacle like coming around from the side and you just turn into it and take the lashing on the back of your shell to no avail. That's Grell number one. Grell number two, however, is going to wheel on you, Doc, um, as this person behind it is paralyzed so it doesn't care as much and it's going to try to harry you with your so mean So it has... Uh disadvantage if waffle can use his reaction uh to kind of get in the way and distract it sure waffle can do that waffle yeah. is a yeah. beast oh, waffle burns his reaction his crew right now. still defending I baby waffle. I don't know if any of that uh, yeah. mattered, but he's going to try. No, it, it's hard. It definitely will. It misses with the beak, but it does unfortunately still catch you with the tentacle, uh, despite Waffle's best efforts. So I need you, Doc, to make a con save DC 11 
and you take 11 points of piercing damage. Okay. Do I do on a fail? Uh, a fail, you would be paralyzed, or but sorry, you made your save, so you're all good. You're all good. Nothing happens, but you take ten, uh, 11 points of damage. Still. Okay, great. Yep. Not great. Those are the growl. Finally, Rhea, you get to make yeah, a saving throw. You've been that'd dying be so cool to do this this turn. That would be so cool. Some, that'd <laughs> that'd be be so cool. On. All right. Come on. There we go. Huzzah, yeah. Rhea. Just uh, shake it up. You, you do shake it off. I'm really sorry. This oh. is exactly what you wanted to do on the first episode. Professor, you're up on seven. Yes. Uh, several things have happened here. Uh, first, yes. I think what's going to happen, he's, he saw uh, he saw who got blown off or moved off the ship here? Lux. 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 Yeah, okay, so <laughs> he saw Lux kind of go. And, oh, oh, Lux. Uh, and then turns back to Astorius to see if Astorius will, will take care of it. Yeah, I'm But then go notices get her. that Astorius is up in the air already. Uh, and oh, okay. Oh, they'll, 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 <laughs> I mean, yeah, that. yeah. Mr. Ace was like, I'm on it. It's fine. Um, and, uh, and then I think uh, what will happen, uh, Rich, would uh, yep. Reginald know uh, the learned uh, folk that he is uh, about types of damage that a mind witness may or may not like? Make an arcana check. Arcana check. Here we go. Oh, Kana, oh, Kana. Ah, oh, yes. I'm going to pool both these nightmarish uh, aberrations into this role. You have no clue, Reggie. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, you studied Ooh, many Reggie. things. You, Ooh, you, you studied many things. Well, then. <laughs> but, um, we shall have to try something. Uh, you said I should be cleansed. I shall assure you I take many baths. And uh, he is going to reach into his pocket. And pull out a uh, what what looks like a wheel, like a little, uh, almost like a pocket watch, but it's like a little cipher wheel. And he's gonna turn it, and the inside is a diamond. Uh, uh, and he's going to turn it in order to set it to uh, we're gonna say uh, cold damage. Ooh. And he will hold it up and fire a chromatic orb. Yeah. Yes. I shall click the button now. Click the 20. button. Nice. 20 hits yeah. solidly. This is for the mind this witness. This is on the mind witness in the distance. You got it. 21 Dude. points. Oh, monster damage. Wow. Yeah. What does it look like, your chromatic orb? Wow. Uh, yeah, I think uh, basically he he twists it to the proper configuration for the uh, for the damage he likes, and then he just holds up the the cipher wheel, and it kind of lights up, and then boom, and just shoots out from there directly at the creature. Sick, professor. That was your action. You got a little more movement. No bonus action, uh, right? That is correct. I think so. He's just going to take it and just just tuck it back into his mm -hmm. his waistcoat. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think he will step over here just in case. Uh, yeah, that's his turn. That's it. That is his turn. It's curious, Fry. You are up. Cool. Um, so I'm going to go over here so I can get my friend. <laughs> um, fly over here. Exciting. Uh, and then I'm going to cast. Exciting. I'm so excited I can fly. Uh, it's really cool. fantastic. I'm excited for you. <laughs> I don't know what we would be doing if, if like, how would we go get her? <laughs> I don't well, know. The bees. Can I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know how helpful that is. On the beach. <laughs> Jay I know you work like ants. Exactly. Like... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So I'm. Well, so tell me, Rich, how it would work to like bring her back? Do I use my movement on my next turn to do that? Um, you could like you know you could you could snatch her up now. You could use your oh, action I could use to my dash action and to bring, just her, bring back. her back. Are we? Yeah. Are we? And, we're not in like like breathing danger out here, right? Um, so you're not outside the the air bubble of the okay. ship yet. No. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess the safer thing to do is just to bring her back now, right? <laughs> probably the right thing to do i can still attack on my bonus action so i'll do that you have a bonus action yeah you have sure cool do. stuff going on uh yeah I, I <laughs> the excitement i love that, that face if there's one thing i know i, love I know that, that stuff 
Okay, uh, so me and Lux are going to come back to the ship. Um, let's stay back here. So we'll come over here, uh, Taylor, if you want to move with me over by the professor. Yes. Uh, and then for my bonus action, let me figure out where to click this on my sheet. Oh, gosh, did I maybe not add it? I no, I put it, it. Oh, I made my sheet. Um, oh, uh-huh. but I guess, so let me check if it is in the... Oh, I did add it. It's the first thing in your attack. List. Amazing. Yes. Okay. So it's this. I'm a competent DM. Uh, what uh-huh. does it look like? As unfortunately you miss your star. <laughs> your um, I guess there's just like a spray of stars that dissipate wildly into the air instead of forming the proper arrow that shoots forward at the, uh, the squiggly guy over here. <laughs> You're not used to this kind of intense combat in space. Uh, you're learning. Oh, no, I'm so, not. With that, <laughs> that Asterius, that's your movement. That's your action. That's your bonus action. You accomplish a lot, though. Lux, I think you're up on five. I think Lux, like, her feet, like, touch the deck. And she's like, thank you so much, Asterius. <laughs> oh, I hate these things. And she's going to fire another arrow at it. Can, it. can I fire another arrow at it? It's a disadvantage. Because I'm frightened. You are at disadvantage because you're frightened. frightened. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, 13 does not hit, unfortunately. Um, let me double check myself. Uh, yep. That's a miss. Uh, that's your action. Bonus action? No. I'm concentrating okay. on Hunter's Mark. You may re-roll your, uh, your saving throw, your wisdom save. Yes. Oof. Oh, oh, you are really scared, Lux. Natural for the folks at home. Uh, I think That's they could see rolls, wrong. but yes, all that is a critical one, which brings us to top of the round, Jake Doya. Jake winds Jake around with his uh, with his war hammer again and takes a swing at the grill, correct? Yes. AC 12. Hits. It does? Mm -hmm. It's only an AC 12. Oh. The the Warhammer does seven points of bludgeoning damage, and the bees that are buzzing (laughs) around the end of it do five points of piercing damage. Whoa. Uh, for a total of 12 as we see the bees like uh, hammering away like you know surging around the end of the, the hammerhead uh, Jake that's your action bonus action anything else um, he will say I'd appreciate it if you would leave this ship Grell <laughs> there he's done you only have six seconds, so you only got like two of those words out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep, it's true. Um, for those of you guys out there, I'm sorry I don't have a map this week. We have so many of us. I didn't want to like squeeze this into little micro bubbles. Like the map's not that interesting, so don't sweat it. Uh, you could see the rolls though, so enjoy that. So that was Jake, which brings us to this horrific uh, eye tentacled thing. I think it's kind of like floating around the edge of the ship a little bit and uh, it's not feeling that thrilled about the fact that you all have damaged it. Yes. And yet it's going to keep firing off eye tentacles. Why wouldn't it? I think it's got to go for you, Reggie. Yes, of course. Bring it on. You have given it a uh, most terrible pain. I need you to make a DC 13 wisdom saving throw against fear. A wisdom saving throw. Yes. yes. Indeed, uh, of which you are yeah, wizard. Did it. Ooh. Uh, oh, yeah. Again, with the freaking telekinetic ray. How about a strength save, DC 13? I am a hippo folk. I do have some <laughs> strength upon me. Indeed. Oh, oh um, I think that this time, rather than try to throw you off the ship, mm. it grabs you and just like whoo, you feel like your heels dragging across the deck as you're shoved the full distance back and you smash 
uh, like kind of full force into the back wall of uh, the deck here, taking nine points of bludgeoning damage. Very well. Did you say and... that, that you're above the weight limit? I was going to say. I am above the weight limit, but I can still be moved. Oh, are you above the weight limit? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say. Uh, so let nice me read this real range. quick. Hold on. I know oh. it's not. I know. If, yeah, I know. if the target is an object oh, isn't. 300 pounds or less. 300 pounds or less. I mean, Reggie's oh. definitely, he's an eight foot tall hippopotamus. Yeah. He's, no, uh, he's clear. Okay. Yeah, he it, it, like totally dropped the ball then, and it was not able to move you. You do not take nine points of damage. You could put yourself back. Uh, way to go for being massive. Uh, <laughs> so instead, I need you to make a con save, DC 13. Great. Yeah, keep coming at me. I like this. Uh, yeah. I have some constitution upon me. Yes. Uh, no. Oh, critical oh, one. Not critical this much. one. Uh, this is really all he wanted to do. Yeah. Stun you. You are stunned for one minute. Repeat your saving throw at the start at the start of each of your turns. So if you make your save, you get to go. Very um, well. Important to note. This brings us to Doc on 15. Doc, you're up. Okay. So um, Chet helped me up out here and Rich confirmed that heroism can be done. I can cast heroism on someone who's frightened and they will become unfrightened, correct? This is, yes, this indeed. Is all that totally legit. works. That totally is legit. That works. That's a fair deal. Cool. That's, okay. That's a fun sound. So, um, Lux has been floating in space. I was freaked out about that, but she's back now. Uh, mm -hmm. Now we're gonna. I'm gonna move back next to her and reach out my hand and be like, "Get it together, woman!" Uh, as I cast <laughs> heroism hey, on her. Chill out. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and then with my bonus action, I'm going to shout back at Waffle, finish that guy off already, uh, and tell him to take his uh, attack action on his turn. So he's going to attack the thingy. Sick. Let's go. Waffle. On, waffle, waffle. Waffle. So waffle. I think first I'll waffle just say it. To... Say yep. uh, so that he's flanking with Rhea, uh, and he's going to do his tail whip again. Because uh, he's a tiny badass uh, that rolls a critical one, so that does nothing. Yeah. Hey, uh... G G G G. He, he tries real hard. He's but he's very small. Uh, he is. He's a little tiny guy. He's itsy bitsy. Um, but wait a minute. Oh no. Yeah, he oh, was flanking. Flanking. Thank you. I yeah, just said he's that. flanking. Oh my god. Which, oh yeah. 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 Right. Okay, that's a twenty-two. Uh, for ten damage. Yeah. Oh, waffle, your, uh, waffle. I'm just gonna chant for waffle, so Casey doesn't have to type it in the chat and get banned by my angry nightbot. <laughs> for any of you guys that are watching, if you want to go check out my Twitter warfret sixteen twenty-five, I just put up a picture of the dragonfly with the details. You can go scope that. Uh, that. Doc, was you in your turn? Yep, that's my turn. That's Waffle's turn. Uh, this guy's still up, right? Yeah. Stupid yep. little. Okay. Yeah. So he, He's you know, pretty that tail swings now, by though. the first time and maybe kind of misses, and the, and Waffle kind of shakes his head a little bit and swings it back and and gets it on the on the on the return hit, basically. Sick. So, yeah, uh, which done. brings us around to the bad man on fourteen. They can't see me. I'm too low for them to see. Uh, so the bad man is still just like on his belly, just like kind of like crawling around on the on the deck of the ship. Uh, he like pokes his head up and he sees that one of these monsters is being flanked by Rhea and Waffles, uh, which would give him advantage. Plus, he's not hiding, but would the flanking give him advantage? Indeed, it would. Oh, yeah. Flanking is just the bomb. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> as long as an enemy or an ally is within five feet of an enemy, it doesn't even have to be flanked. Yeah, you don't need. Yeah. Well, he gets sneak attack, but he's talking about advantage, right? right. Um, like you definitely uh, could get. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. Yeah, I missed that, Josh. If you're just trying to throw it, as long as anybody's fighting, like you get sneak attack on everyone except the mind witness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the monster that is being flanked right now, uh, the badman is going to just like pop up real quick and just go take one of these as he throws one of his psychic plays <laughs> <laughs> at advantage. That's a twenty-four. 
Um, right? But the problem is it's not an advantage. I'd I'm wait, sorry. Oh, okay, so we were confused. Uh, was he hiding, yeah, though? Was we he are coming confused. out of stealth? No, oh, no, no. He's not. He was just laying flat on the okay, ground. Okay, I misunderstood. Um, so then, uh, that's okay. Then I am going to do... Can I roll a psionic die or no? You can't. Only skill checks. Oh, poop. Well, the badman is proving to be a bad character uh, <laughs> no, <he's not. laughs> the Batman jumps uh, so off the ship never to be seen again you um, got a bunch of options here um like you know you got a couple of options i don't know how deep yeah, i should no, dig no, into no, them. no 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 you're good um okay the badman uh <laughs> the badman will uh begin the process of running uh past this monster uh as he and as he does uh, he is going to uh, offhandedly throw a psychic blade. It's like kind of like a drive-by at this thing. <laughs> offhand, just uh, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. kind of just like le- <laughs> launching it at yeah. offhandedly, <laughs> and he's like going to miss that too. Uh, That's brutal. It, these are just uh, rough rolls. These are tough rolls, and he's just going to run over here to the rest of the group and be like, "Hey, how's it going, everyone? <gasps> this seems to be going just <laughs> okay. This seems to be going just okay so far. I think he's earning his moniker." Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'll just. Does it get it. an attack if he run? I'm so sorry to do this joke. If it, if he runs into its rant and then runs out of it, does it get an attack of opportunity? Oh yeah, it totally does. <laughs> yeah, Grace is on it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All yeah, right, yeah. take a hit. Go for it. Yep. Okay. Yep, yep. Grace is on it. Grace is on it. Equal opportunity. <laughs> you, Let's do it. I think it like lashes out at you there with you the go. peak because uh, there you go. It totally missed. You can't yeah. touch Bye. me. <laughs> Ice man, <laughs> You can't hit me. I'm the bad man. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey Grace, it's the fourth round yeah. of combat. Would you like to do something? I'm gonna come on. I have it. like so many plans, but all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out my spear. I'm gonna two handedly try to stab this grill in front of me. Fifteen. Two handedly. Not offhand. Two handedly. Two hands. Two hands. Hits. Yeah. Fifteen. <laughs> Awesome. Great. <laughs> um, for four points of piercing damage, that's your action. Uh, you also have bonus action. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, we see you, like, drive the spear up. And the thing's, like, like lashing around, right? But I think the tip of it just, like, jags into the brain, right? Let's, because um, Waffle's been pretty instrumental here. Um, Ray's going to cast um, Shield of Faith. On wow. Waffle. So Waffle will get wow. two extra on the AC. Yeah. And that... the protects the Waffle show. Yeah, and that's so great. Waffle. I, love um, it. Yeah, so I know. Waffle's I love got it. a bit of a cheeky grin at the best of times, but I think he's got like, I think he like lights his little butane torch, like a BB-8 thumbs up kind of situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's Star Wars. We're going to make Star Wars. Reference, it's fine. Yes. Yeah, it is. May the fourth be with Waffle. Uh, Raya, that was your action. That was your movement or your bonus action. I'm not going to move. You're not going to move. And so, uh, Reggie, you can repeat your saving throw. Uh, Yes. And I think it just kind of starts like Reginald spent the last turn just absorbing rays, right? And it's like (laughs) trying to push him back and he like wouldn't move. He dug in. But it does like finally the stunning hits him and he's just spent the last like six seconds just like staring like, "Uh uh 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 uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Okay, wisdom saving throw, I think. Is that what it was? Or was it constitution? Constitution saving throw, I believe. Yep, yep. Uh, 17. 17. You are good. You break free of the paralyzation, and that was at the beginning of your turn. You have the rest of it. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, well, as my great teacher once said, if once is good. Did you say grape teacher? <laughs> if once is good. I think Reg- Reginald just kind of like turns to <laughs> the, the bad man and just if if once is good, uh, twice is better. And he casts chromatic orb again, uh, yes. pulls back out, does it like a good halfling that he knows. Uh, oh. Twenty two to twenty two hit. hits. Uh, this is cold damage. Uh, level one. <laughs> 19. 
Oh. It's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Chromatic orb is very powerful for anybody not paying attention. And, Kate, you know, Chad talks all the time in the Discord about the Tarask. Uh, it's the most powerful monster there is in Dungeons & Dragons. I saw it defeated in 2nd edition by ninth level characters with the Chromatic Orb. One Chromatic Orb. I'll tell that story someday. Maybe. Not today. Professor, that was your action. Movement bonus action? Yeah, I think he's like, even even Reg- like Reginald like looks at, at the cypher wheel and just kind of... Goodness, okay. Uh, and uh, no bonus action, but he shall move forward in order to get in combat with this beaked creature. Oh, well. Professor getting <laughs> getting brazen. Uh, Asturias, you're up on six. Yeah, Did you say raisins? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> They're like grapes. They actually are grapes. <laughs> Are you sure about that? I've been affected by the sun. <laughs> if we get closer to the sun, they're not as, them better they're raisins. not quite as tasty, but they do have their moments. Is that actually why you're on this ship? Just on a raisin production trip? <laughs> That's my secret. <laughs> <laughs> That's my secret. Uh. I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt at, the, <laughs> at the, the big dude. At the Mind Witness. Got it. Uh, I can't. Come on. Oh, he still has disadvantage on his attack roll from the... <laughs> 16 hits. Excellent. What does your Guiding Bolt look like? A great question. You keep asking me these things. I know. I know. Go figure. Uh, a flash of light. I mean, it's starlight, obviously. So like, I'm. It's like a, there's a lot of fireworks with apparently all of my characters. Um, so it shoots towards what is it called? A mind what? Witness. Witness. witness? Okay. So we're shooting this guiding bolt at the mind witness, and you're seeing like it's like a shooting star shooting through the sky. Um, nice. And it's radiant damage, so like this comet comes shooting at the mind witness, and then like engulfs it in this glowing um, comet dust. I don't know. Uh, yeah, and then, comet dust. Comet dust. I told you I'm leaning real hard into the stars. Yeah. Um, please. Bonus action. Get ready. Here it comes. Oh, oh nine. Unfortunately, <laughs> and there it goes. Miss. Yeah. Wait, not a great, no. Not a great archer. No, 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 no. Because you just hit it with a guiding yes, bolt, the next yes. attack against yes. it has advantage, yes. which guiding means you bolt. rolled a 20. You just set yourself up for the ultimate one two Woo. punch ready. roll for your star archer. Cool. Oh, uh, yeah. More stardust. So radiant damage. This thing looks badly, badly hurt. There's this huge, like, section on the side of it that is clearly, like, kind of frozen over, ice kind of falling off and fraking away. You could see that, like, the flesh on it is burned. The, like, double tap of uh, starbursts from Asturias has badly injured it. Uh, that was your action. That was your bonus action. You have movement. I don't think I need it. Okay, Lux, Asturias you're up on five. Just hanging back like stars, man. Yeah, I know you saw it. Saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding back. I'm holding back, but I saw it. You saw it. Starburst. Starburst. <laughs> like somehow I knew Grace would get. <laughs> <laughs> they come in great. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Starburst. <laughs> Lux, you are up. You haven't tried them. You haven't lived. Okay. <laughs> okay. The first thing I have to say Smile. is, like, ever since, uh, like, I started thinking about Star Wars, and I'm going to need, at some point, for the professor to say, hello there, and for the bad man to say, General Kenobi, at some point Jason in the Kenobi. stream. Please. Noted. But I should have given you guys a uh, red shirt captain named General Kenobi just so we could kill him right here, honestly. <laughs> right. Um, okay, so uh, how far away is this thing from me? Not that far that it matters for your bow. Um, no, that's not my main. Eh, it's a little too far away. 
Well, also the the uh, monster that just got super hit by you, Zed. That's the one far off the deck, or or the mind witness. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> yes. the big thing off the deck. Now that I know its name, it's the one that's yeah, not Hell on yeah. the ship. Sweet, sweet, sweet. You're, nice job. You're All not right. afraid anymore either, Lux. So you can move. Yeah. You know. I'm not yeah. afraid so, anymore. I'm not yeah, 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 afraid yeah, That's anymore. what I was looking for. Thank you. Yeah, Lux <laughs> is gonna make a beeline. Ooh. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> The growl makes an attack of opportunity. Well, I talk yeah, for that. <laughs> yeah. Wait, the growl can't make an attack of opportunity at you because this was the same round that it did right. to. It has the growls haven't attacked this round, Rich. By the way, and I'm up next. No, they did, definitely did. Didn't they attack nope. uh, the the mad the bad man? That was a that was an attack of opportunity. The, the, growl, the growl on me has not attacked me since I attacked it next last round, and I go next. I know it attacked L- L- no Doc, right? And, and yeah, when did... it, they did. Yeah. So I I forgot the one that might. No, I did. It missed you. Yeah, it missed you, Kurt. This was the whole like your shell, your shield. I'm pretty sure. Uh, did what? I miss the? Did mm, I miss the growl? I think it stream? might have because Skim the Doc chat, goes no before Doc goes before the grill, so. It would have attacked, and then the grill. Is it I the see grill? him. What yeah, I see him right before uh, Doc's turn. Yep, they went. They went. They went. We're good. Uh, we're good. Thank you, though, for the for the gut check. Lux, you take uh, no attack of opportunity because it burned its reaction. What would you like to do? Okay, so now that the mind witness is close enough, I will use my planar warrior ability, and my bow lights up this nice, beautiful white glow on the arrow that she knocks and fires. Thank goodness. Uh, uh, 24 hits. All right. So you're going to make eight. eight points damage plus Hunter's Mark. Yes. Hunter's Mark. Plus Planar Warrior. Oh! oh. That's 1920. Who's max damage? Exactly. <laughs> That's 1921 points of damage. We see Lux come like racing forward and kind of like uh, step up onto the railing. Like like one hand kind of, I think, plants on your head, Professor, as she like darts past you for like balance, jumping down into the deck behind Jake. I really almost just called Jake uh, uh, Clancy. And I think he fires <laughs> the I arrow wish. like streaking over the wing uh, on, the, on the side of the ship and i think that it just hammers into the central eye of this mind witness and i think all of you like hear this like terrific scream in your minds as it's like and uh it dies Uh, the whole thing moves up the tentacles kind of like falling and it begins kind of like floating past lux that was your action that was your bonus action you're up on 20 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Jake will lash out with his warhammer again. Mm-hmm. AC eighteen. It's eight points of bludgeoning damage. Eight points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, got it. Is it still up? It is. <laughs> Was that the yes? Sorry. Yes. Oh, yeah. No uh, then the the bees, the bees swarm the bees, around doing five points the bees. of damage. <clears throat> the bees like swarming around the end of the hammer as you like thump it down into the mass of this thing. Uh, that's your action bonus action. Anything else? All good. Okay, Doc, you're up. Okay. Um. So, Doc still had her. Uh, battle axe in her hand this whole time so she's going to run back and try to uh, hit this guy uh, in front of her with advantage yes and two handed because she's not holding anything else Uh, 22 22 definitely hits yeah for six damage it's fine it's fine (laughs) <laughs> it is fine. Uh, you got to start somewhere for six. It, it's like pretty hurt at this point. Uh, the one in front of Jake also looking pretty battered. Um, so that's your action, Doc. Great. Uh, and then uh, she's going to 
instruct Waffle to once again whip his tail back and forth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Give it the whip. 12 is just what it needs. That's a hit. I whip my tail back and forth. For four more damage. Got it. Got it. Got it. Go, uh, waffle, we see go. Waffle like crack into like this gross brain with his little tail. Uh, this Grell like looks pretty damaged. It's like missing a tentacle. It's like battered, surrounded on all sides. Uh, Doc, that's your turn. Yep. Okay, which brings us to the bad man on fourteen. The bad man is gonna like stand up from having like slid all the way back to the deck. Uh, he gave like the quick like, "Hey, how's everybody doing over here?" But they all dispersed. Uh, (laughs) they all like ran away they all ran away from so he's gonna pop up he's gonna see one of these crazy people in in front of him uh he is going to uh he's gonna hide here if i can because that sure you could jump down into like the cargo deck and like hide you know i mean and then like pop back up if you want yeah Yeah. he's like gonna like roll into it like a trough uh because that's what you do with troughs right you roll into them yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So he's going to do that uh, for So 16. bonus action, you make a stealth check. Yeah. Okay. Rolling trough. Yeah, all right. And then he's going to pop up out of the trough and look at the bad guy across. So he's going to uh, shoot some psychic blades past Rhea at this thing. Trough hand attack. Trough hand attack. <laughs> trough hand attack. Yeah. 17 hits. The trough man prophecies uh, for five plus sneak That's attack. That's uh, Kings of Neon. For nine, 14. Oh. Uh oh, uh, we see the psychic blade like rip into this thing, and it's like uh, <laughs> the beak like snapping. It looks like really in bad shape now. Yeah, uh, and I think uh, I'm going to trough hand attack. Oh, I can't trough hand attack this thing, so I'm just gonna lie back down. You did burn your bonus yeah, action. Burned no trough hand yeah. attack this yeah, that was a yeah. trough hand attack. But in the yeah. span of six seconds, he's like, I gotta jump in this trough and I'm gonna hop yeah. out and I'm gonna throw yeah. a blade. <laughs> that would take Reggie yeah. like six turns. <laughs> did you move? I'm so confused. Yeah, I did well let me move just to show you what I did. I'm <laughs> I'm in there. Back out? I'm in the trough. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the trough. I like rolled into the trough. I'm like, let's go into the trough. And then I rolled into the trough very stealthily. And then I popped up from the trough. I said, hey, how's it going? And I shot one of my 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 bad psychic blades. And I said, I'm going to pop back down into the trough. And so I'm now back down in the trough. Yeah. Okay. Makes so that's how you sense. know he's sneaky because he's told you everything he's about to yeah. 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 Moves yeah. like dagger. We're good. Yeah. I'm really (laughs) sneaky. I remember. That's how all of this started, isn't it? With the rogue declaring how sneaky they were. Uh, (laughs) So with with that. coming when I come from the trough. (laughs) When I pop out of the trough, you won't see see me. Peaks and valleys. The bad man doesn't like to attack from level. Only up higher, down low. That's correct. (laughs) Don't forget to breathe. Um, Okay, the growl go. They're definitely going to go this round, whatever they did last round. This one goes for you, Jake. It hates the bees. It hates the bees. 22. It catches you with the beak for nine points of piercing damage. Oh, you found the meaty part. (laughs) Uh, And I think it, like, rotates around here. No, it's not going to do that. Uh, And this (laughs) one is, like, completely surrounded on all angles. Uh, Like, who just hit it? All of you just hit it. Oh, Waffle. (laughs) Waffle. It hates Waffle. Uh, (laughs) It's Waffle. Also the smallest one. Um, Yeah, I think it's got to. I think Waffle just popped it. It gives the tentacles to Waffle 17. Uh, Plus two AC because of Shield of Faith. No, just hit. Oh. Still just hits, huh? Um, Yo, shout out to, be... to Zach, newly in the post show recaps Discord. Yeah. 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 Hey. Welcome, welcome to the party. You will not regret Zach, that. Zach, thank you for joining. <laughs> that was a really good idea. Uh, you made the best made choice, choice. of a this year, choice. but definitely today. I well, played you only... you <laughs> Zach. Zach is very fun. Yeah. Uh, you only take eight points of damage for poor Waffle, not okay. 11. Uh, oh, but cool. he, in fact, must make a constitution saving throw unless he's immune to poison. Is he? Uh, I believe he is. He's a construct. He's so yes, he, is. he is. Immune he is, to right? Poison. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Uh, yeah, this he's made stupid a growl. Didn't Sorry. even think about it. And then six, it misses. These growl went. They just sucked. Uh, Rhea, you're up. Um, let's just attack it with my spear, two-handed. 
Um, nice. 21 hits. Seven. Rhea. How do you want to do this? Yeah. Oh, I'm stealing yeah. that from this other D&D stream. Get it, the two-handed uh, spear right into, like, the neck area, you know, um, really make it flail all over the place, ooze out whatever it has mm-hmm, for insides. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, That's mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Very okay, tough. cool. For and being, it freaking paralyzed it. me for, like, yeah, and that's it. It did 20 for seconds. Solid. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, um, yeah, such a casual murder. I know. think uh, it was yep. great. It was really good. Rhea, that was your action. You have movement and a bonus action, and this thing is not here, so it cannot um, threaten you. Would you like to go anywhere? I'll, I'll head over uh, over here. I think that's as much. I won't get quite up to it. That's there it. you go. Back yeah. up, Clancy. With uh, that, oops, I skipped the professor. Professor, you are up. <gasps> that is okay. That is fine. Um I think uh, Reginald will look and see what appears to be just one remaining growl. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think he will uh, go up uh, onto the upper level. He will move through a friendly space because I think that's allowed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, he will pass by this. Uh... You know what? No, he won't. He is yeah. going to use the ballista that we have been uh, uh, ignoring with the entire time. Mm-hmm. I think you're gonna see a hippopotamus fire a a a, a ballista. Yes. Okay, I what, think that. What you, do I do? I think you get on the ballista and you have to move over here to like aim it at the growl, right? Great. Uh, you like <laughs> yank the strap and like pull around, like pivoting this giant crossbow. Uh, and I think it's like pointed. Yeah, I know we're gonna keep doing that. It's pointed like right over Clancy's shoulder. Jake, I'm I just. Sorry, Jake. Uh, Yes, Jesus. Speaking I'm going to keep doing it now. No, not Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, not Jesus. To me, Clancy. close enough. Oh, Even yeah. better. <laughs> Even better. Clancy. Um, I think that you just need to make uh, an attack roll with... Are you proficient in missile weapons in crossbows? No. No. <laughs> roll 1d20 uh, plus your dex. Cross, I have light crossbow and sling. I don't think this is going to apply. Roll 1d20 plus your dex. I love it. Done. Uh, I'm just going to click dex. With a dex. That's perfect. Yeah. With a dexterity of zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! oh! <laughs> <laughs> So what I happens? love the Jake and I are like just right like there. Up there. Like I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Jake. What happens to Jake? <laughs> Jake. With the dexterity of zero. <laughs> <laughs> Critical one. <laughs> Critical one. So I think maybe, you shoot Jake in the, the back. Shoot the in the I think you accidentally <laughs> shoot Jake in the back. I'm like really like low on friendly fire, but given the context of this, like you shoot Jake in the back, right? I think that that's like what accidentally happens. I think while you're turning it, like before you're able to like get it positioned over him, you accidentally like like tap the trigger and the bolt lances off crashing into Jake's back. I need you to roll 3d6. Oh goodness. Uh okay, roll 3d6. Oh, <laughs> the hot and cold. Oh. 1 a 6 and a Jake, 1. Jake, <laughs> you feel like a smash into your back as this uh, ballista hammers into you. Um I need you to make a strength saving throw. Can I help him? Like, can Lux? Like... I don't think so, because this is okay. reaction type stuff. It's not yeah. your turn, Jake. Okay. You you like stumble off the ship, boof! As you like ball, you see Jake catch this ballista bolt. You guys gotta realize the ballista bolt's bigger than Waffle. You know, it hits Jake in the back, and I think he cartwheels over the edge of the railing. You know, falling quite fortunately onto the wing, where like you're kind of like clutching the wing in here on the corner. Um, this is not revenge for Vesk. I think Professor. <laughs> That was your movement and your action. Anything else? I think the professor is stunned yet again. Uh, <laughs> and I, I do think that he says, Oh, good goodness! And that's it. I good love narratively goodness. how this reinforces all the professor's bad feelings. 
<laughs> on how military this is exactly, <laughs> it's so perfect i already had it in my head of like uh give a gift cue a gun and this is just bad news <laughs> it's so perfect. it's gonna take a lot for Rhea to you know to be friends with the hip the, uh, the professor just <laughs> shot a this is the telltale <laughs> moment of like Rhea will remember accidents. this. Yeah. With the there was no safety on the ballista. Yeah, for real. <laughs> you just hear from over the edge of the ship. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the one shell shocked. That was impressive. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> so bad. That was pretty I'm impressive. Still still zero. Zero. Oh my puns God. of damage. Puns of damage oh. are happening. Asturias, you are watching this whole uh, like uh, shit show happening up on the front. What would you like to do? More stars. You gotta save another falling person. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm, I'm well, to be clear, wing. he's still he landed yeah, on the wing. Yeah, yeah, he's not like floating through space yet. No, he's right? on the wing. He's on the wing. That was amazing. Yeah. He's, he's too far. Right Fry now. bottom is flabbergasted. Can't, can't get there. Lost. That's too good. Um, um, I'm gonna cast yeah. another guiding bolt because uh, I get two for free thanks to my star map. You sure do. Star map is badass. So cool. A uh, nine is unfortunately a miss as you yeah. fire uh, your guiding bolt towards this thing. Womp womp. Okay, that's okay. I can still be a star archer. Eighteen <laughs> totally God. hits. Yay! As we see, like one hand, like fires the guiding bolt, and you like pull back this starry constellation for ten points of radiant damage. Histories. Uh, this thing's like. <laughs> This like horrible like, kind of groaning uh, sound here in the void. Uh, that's your turn. You have movement if you'd like to move. Um, I guess just to be safe in case things get worse up there, uh, I'm gonna fly like here. Yeah, that's good. Okay. okay, awesome. And this brings us to locks on five. Austin said, "A starcher, yeah, a starcher, a starcher." Um, you're up, Lux. Yes. Uh, gosh. Okay, it's far enough away. She's not in melee with it, right? But <laughs> she's not. But uh, your boy Jake yeah, here is say. like hanging off the edge of the ship. Right. But she's not. There was yeah. a plan here. I had a plan. So yeah. Lux is going to reach over the side and try and pull Jake up. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Make an Uh, athletics check. Okay. Oh. Oh, my goodness. You fall off the edge of the ship. I think you grab him by the shell and the bees, like, sting you in the hands. And I think you, Did like, you pull for the yard. Quickly, oh! <laughs> yeah, like, I think you, like, tumble no. over the edge of the ship, like, grabbing down onto mm-hmm. the thing. Uh, yeah, I think both of you now clinging to the wing of the dragonfly as you see the dead body of, like, the mind witness kind of floating no. off behind while you're slowly trailing along. I think that's your action. You yep. do have some movement movement though so you can like climb back onto the ship oh my god uh i think that she's gonna stay with jake (laughs) absolutely killing me you're like braced back here behind jake jake you're up on 20 hey how's it going you okay over here back um jake is (laughs) Jake drops his shield and warhammer on the deck of the ship. So um, you throw your shield and warhammer over on the deck of the ship. Yep. Well, no, he, he didn't. He, like when he was hit, I think he dropped. Okay, 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 yeah, okay. By the yep. giant ballista. Yeah. Yep. But he's got a. <laughs> he <would> do that. <laughs> <It's so good. laughs> With the dexterity <laughs> of zero. zero. <laughs> eight of us hitting this one growl. <laughs> Two of you are no longer on the ship. Uh, uh, Jake's gonna reach down with one hand and grab one of his short swords that's at his waist. Yep. And just like slash at the grout. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
<gasps> Please, another nat one. The critical ones are coming Guys, in hard tonight. There, what is going on tonight? Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh, that's God. a hit, Jake. That's a hit, Jake. <sighs> Five piercing. Young Jake. <sighs> and his his bees move him five feet onto the deck of the ship. Oh my yeah, god, the bees! <laughs> the bees! So cool. The bee escort! Yeah. You see Jake just like kind of like lazily slash up and he slices the grill like brain matter open. It's like kind of bounces off the wing like floating away as the ship is like continuously moving and suddenly in front of you Lux you hear like bzzz, as like the bees like around Jake they kind of float him back up under the deck. Well, well they move me five feet horizontally. Yeah, they shove you back over the jack. I think that they see. I think we see Jake like a turtle, you know, like. Lux is like, I'll stay here. He's like, no, I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> I would imagine bees... if Jake is ever on the back of his shell, the bees help him get. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Like, flip him over. Yeah. Precisely. I think the bees rotate you back onto the ship, uh, and with that, all of your opponents appear to have been destroyed. Here is a scary word. Um, I reached down to help pull up uh, Lux. I was gonna say Waffle definitely flies over and starts like trying to like tug her up very frantically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Ray is staring at the professor a bit. (laughs) I think yes, the professor is slowly backing away from the ballista (laughs) with. I think like Lux as she like climbs over the railing, she like kind of like laughs a little bit. Like, gosh, that was exciting. Can <laughs> Professor, someone... we might have to get you some ballista lessons though. Can someone let me know if my shell is cracked? <laughs> <laughs> I can't I'm... see it. I'm I'm terribly sorry. I. I didn't know it was such a a, a hair trigger. Uh, and I think uh, Reginald goes and looks and makes sure that his shell is intact. It is. Yeah, it is. Rhea is his kind shell of like is moving made of the tough professor stuff. out of the w- to also check. <laughs> 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 it's like, okay, like, okay. Chef, yeah, like, it's okay. <laughs> Lux, like, pats the professor, like, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll teach you. It's fine. Just take some learning. It's okay. I am very much a fan of learning, but I am not certain that is a lesson I am eager to be taught. I well. I believe that I believe that weapons with triggers should best be left to those with the capabilities to fire them. That's good too. <laughs> I think Doc is like night shift nursing around to everybody, like uh, checking in on who might need some healing after all of that because uh, she lost Jake track. Looks really beat. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Jake's are pretty bad. Jake's are pretty bad. <laughs> so Doc is gonna go up and, and place a hand on Jake's shell and and um, cast cure wounds on Jake. <laughs> I mean, what was that after the after the ballista hit you? He had four hit yep. points. Is that right? Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> that easily could have like been oh, very, very bad. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> Sorry, Kurt. We get we get the good version of that. I wanted to know? use the toys. <laughs> I almost Shiny wish that I had dropped. I think that would have been more fun. That would have been <laughs> crazy. Oh my goodness. Okay, so all of you are here kind of like working together on the deck of the ship. These creatures have all been destroyed, you know. Um, the ooze blasted apart by ice. Uh, the mine witness hammered with the chromatic orbs and the arrows of, of Lux. These growl like slowly battered down by all of you, right? Um, and you could see that the ooze did some meaningful damage to the side of the ship, even yeah. just in the couple of rounds it was there. Do we have like... Uh, supplies to re, uh, fix things like that? Uh, yeah, you have some supplies here on the ship, certainly. Um, I think as you guys are all standing here on the deck, you can see the the carcass of the um, Kinduri is still like off in the distance behind That's you. That's the mine um, witness, right? 
No, no, I'm like, sorry. The Kinduri is a whale. space whale. Oh, space whale. Oh. Yeah, the space whale. Uh, and like, it seems like all these things came from that, right? And I think that, like, you know, you you could like put the pieces together that like the growl and the the, the oozes and stuff were certainly like feeding on this massive thing. Um, I I think anybody who's proficient in like nature could roll it here. <laughs> Or should roll it here if anybody has nature proficiency. We are a nature not, domain. 13. We are not docking on the dead whale. <laughs> uh, I think that it makes sense actually uh, that you would know this Lux uh, from your travel in the stars as a young person. That um, like dead kenduri are actually like really highly valuable. There's a ton of stuff of value in their corpses and there are even certain creatures and, and entities that use, um, their like skeletons as the infrastructure to build ships. Oh, uh, Hey, um, by the way, guys, that, the thing that all that, the, the, um, you know, the jelly and the, uh, yucky things came from that's that's pretty like valuable i don't know if you guys want to pick it up or not but certainly could the bad so man too large. the bad man pops up out from the cargo just like bolts, <laughs> bolts upright he also has his, his cat jeffrey is now in his hands so somehow he's returned he's uh, regurgitated yeah jeffrey. it's just yeah. a black cat yeah. what, what, you, what you ever. missed is in the cargo once the battle was over like a cat coughing up a, a hairball uh the bad man uh coughs up jeffrey uh and he's holding jeffrey tight to his chest he goes jelly where no we kill we kill that thing oh and then he lies back down. <laughs> I don't think you're ready for this jelly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh huh. Yep. If it's grape flavored, I am. Also, um, I, I, uh, did you guys know what it was talking about? What? It said something. Ab- <clears throat> I'm sorry. It said something. <laughs> uh, Jake explains that that it said something about an orb. Yes. I was focused on saying that we should be cleansed. Yeah, that part was pretty, uh, you know, bone chilling as well. But it, do you guys know of an orb? Uh, do do I know of an orb? Um, I mean, you know what <laughs> the orbs are, right? The orbs, the spheres, these are these like receptacles of knowledge from uh, the old age. Um, there was once like this kind of great infrastructure that was beginning to rise up across the stars and knowledge was housed in these kind of orbs and these repositories. So you don't know of one here, do you? Um, like, I don't think so. I don't think so. I can't imagine oh, why it would come here. I'm lying. Uh, I believe that the information that you were given by Yavana, um, when all of you left, you were you were presented with a list of like locations that had not been um, like visited in years. These are these are sort of uh, places in in the galaxy in the multiverse that are not major stops for like the interstellar trade routes um because travel in space now is like restricted to really only like these great mercantile enterprises these large bureaucratic factions that have kind of like military fleets and stuff um and these are these are sort of uh, esoteric locations and individuals from yavana's past that you all are supposed to like make contact with uh, examine, explore, and I think there was an orb presented to you here in the ship that's containing all that information. Okay. Did the mind witness also come from the whale corpse? Mm-hmm. I guess if and it was kind of on a whim, I kind of said, you know, Jake may be an unofficial inventory stores master for the shit, like um, I think he would see, like as much as Kurt is repulsed by let's dock the ship on the corpse. Um, 
I think hearing Lux kind of re, you know tell the tale of you know the, the history of these things, maybe he would be like, well, perhaps we should investigate. We could always use more supplies and things to barter or trade with when we get to other locations. I'd agree with that. Sounds fine to me. Just wash your hands when we get back. Yes, we shall be sufficiently cleansed. I I am concerned, however, that you may not have the vitality to survive another encounter with these such creatures. What are we to do if we get there and there's yet another of these foul beasts? I'm not worried about creatures. And he looks at the ballista. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Again, my sincerest apologies. Jake has nine more HP, by the way. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, oh. Oh, you know, I got the the. Do you need more? Do you need more? He- do you need more healing? <laughs> he he could use more, but he's oh. not. Oh, Rhea will absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, clerics shouldn't play favorites, and yet. Well, yes. I mean, when you worship a turtle and there's a turtle in your midst, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Keep that turtle alive at all costs. Can I ask you a question, Philly? I have uh, cure wounds at a level one, but because I'm a level, I can cast level two. So can I cast it at level two? You sure can, uh, and it'll give you a two d eight plus your wisdom modifier instead of one d eight. So it's nine, correct? So you- yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. I think as you all are like here and you're kind of like, um, you, you know, you, you, you're talking about like going back to the whale. I think like you, you catch sight in the far distance of like this tiny little like, you know, bluish green marble off in the far distance. And you recognize like, oh, OK, there's like that's a planet way the hell over there. It's not a juice marble. Um, it might be there, you know, perspective, but it's probably a planet. Are we going to harvest the creature? Oh, give me the tailor. Give me the tailor. Yes, I do believe we should do that. (laughs) (laughs) Very Uh, well. Approximately how long would it take to get there? Yeah. Uh, Not long to like double back to the whale. You guys could be there in like, you know, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Less Less than 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 a short rest. Yeah, I mean, you're welcome to take a short rest, of course, but it would be faster than the short rest. You could get there very quickly. It's right. like just behind your ways. I will double back to the whale. Seconded. <laughs> Third. <laughs> uh, that's four. That's four. Okay. I mean, um, largely so I... because if Philly is actually invested in a dead whale map, I want to see it. <laughs> I also want to see the dead whale map. Does one of does some of it? Can uh, I like head to the like? Can I steer the ship towards the? You can, yeah. in fact, uh, the steering of the vessel, the dragonfly, operates from the helm and in, in the in the front like cockpit of the of the vessel, and so the helm is this kind of throne. Uh, it requires a spellcaster to kind of um, converge with the helm and direct the ship, guide the ship through space. All of you are, in fact, capable of uh, manipulating the ship to one extent or another interestingly and so with that um i guess a lot of you kind of like you know you're moving around the top deck you drop down in through uh the troughs into the lower end you close uh the bay doors right you're down in the cabins you head into the cockpit and so we see raya like slip like sit into the seat um and yeah your eyes close raya and you you begin to like attune with the helm of the ship and you literally feel yourself like your awareness extend into the entirety of the ship itself um and it is this sort of um 
really unique and extraordinary experience, right? As like in one sense, it's almost like a, a, a sensory deprivation tank, right? You're like in this void of kind of space. Um, and yeah, uh, as you take control of the ship, you're able to kind of like turn it around and like easily begin guiding it back towards the carcass of this uh, this Kanduri. And so as you all are approaching, um, is anybody doing anything else particular here we should take I note think, of? Um, uh, Jeffrey the cat has broken away from the bad man to sniff uh, waffles. Uh, uh, so Jeffrey is just like kind of like pawing up, like nuzzling his head against uh, the little robot dragon. Aww. I think the bad man will say to Doc, my cat likes your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think Doc looks over at the bad man and been like, "You need a, you need a spell for that throat bud." <laughs> a lozenger would be fine. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and I think Waffle, as um, as Jeffrey approaches, Waffle kind of throws up the torch for a second, like ready to throw, you know, blast it at the cat. And then as the cat seems to like, he like pockets it back away and kind of leans into the <laughs> the hangout but he was he was ready for a second if yeah. he was being attacked by this cat <laughs> amazing a little bit of tension anybody else or any of you guys doing anything are we all kind of gathering in the cockpit as as ray is going to drive you to the whale uh i uh, the professor will spend uh approximately 10 minutes plus one action <laughs> To ritually cast uh, Unseen Servant. Ooh. Nice. And uh, an Unseen Servant will exist for an hour, uh, and he will uh, command it to go clean up uh, the helm, uh, or, or up the upper deck, uh, mm -hmm. uh, any kind of dead body, ochre jelly, anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then mm -hmm. as best as possible, uh, if it has the capability to mend that part of the ship uh, in conjunction with anyone else okay. who might be doing that. Okay. Um, and so with that, uh, as like that, the bay door is open again and this invisible servant makes its way to the upper deck to clean the mess that was made by this invasion of jellies and brains and eye monsters. Oh my. Uh, yeah. Rhea, you guide the ship back as you all are kind of like gathered in the cockpit. You can see through these like clear domes in the front, this glass Lux as you're approaching. Is also helping mm -hmm. like with yeah. general ship things. She's very concerned okay. with the ship. Yeah, like, Doc mm -hmm. is going to go use mending to try to also help repair the ship. Oh. Okay, excellent. I think there's like a really like interesting scene as Rhea is like driving this dragonfly back, the wings like like vibrating now as Rhea is kind of like um, controlling this whole thing. And Doc, you're up there, and yeah, you see like these bits of ochre jelly are just being like like cast off the ship as this invisible servant conjured by the professor is like working and acting uh, adjacently to you, right? The grail corpse is thrown off. Uh, th there's like you know, I think we get a little bit of like sorcerer's apprentice there's a point where there's like a mop mopping up like crowl bud you know what i mean like dunking in and out of like the bucket or whatever um i think waffle is going to so, be scared of the invisible thing and is like cowering behind me now oh mm -hmm. baby that's poor waffle he's scared of the invisible guy you're a mean wizard professor <laughs> uh, <laughs> only so, at midterms only Jake is Jake is going to cast Mage Hand, and it forms out of bees. Of course, it does. Um, right. And he has the Mage Hand play with waffles. Oh, there you go. And it's like waffles kind of like cowering behind you. Jake's up on the deck and like the hand of bees is like we're doing like the cat thing. Waffles still a little like I uh, got a little bit of trepidation. It seems um, the invisible servant like mopping, cleaning. You're able to like utilize your mending dock as you're like repairing like bits, right? Like scouring it. You probably have like, a, I don't know, something to like neutralize the acid. Um, and so, yeah, Rhea, you have this uh, kind of <laughs> uh, uh, like bird's eye view right dragon dragonflies view as you're coming in 
uh, like passing along the side of the carcass of like this giant space whale, this Kenduri. And you could see pretty decidedly, as can a lot of you up on the deck, um, these other like kind of oozes and jellies that are like attached on the inside um, and kind of like gnawing away and eating at it. But I think as you all are approaching it, uh, what's everybody's passive perception? I didn't write that down yet, 13. and I should have. <laughs> 14. Oh, I'm sure it's quite wonderful. 14. A nine. Uh, <laughs> Waffle cannot be surprised, zero. though, if that matters. 13. Oh, cool. Uh, where'd it go? Ooh, 14. 15. Yeah. Ooh. Wise book. 14. <laughs> so wise. A lot of 14s here. A lot of 14s. What'd you say yours was, Lux? 14. <laughs> wow, yeah. so many 14s. You heard the part, Rich, about Waffle is vigilant, yep. so he can, okay, great. Cannot Must be, be nice. surprised. Must yep. be nice. Nothing is like Must attacking you, nice. it is. Okay. Must nice. be nice indeed. Um, it's probably sad on his birthday. I so I think, <laughs> perception I think uh, Rhea, Doc, Lux, and Vry, I think that like the lot of you, Rhea, like you're in the ship, so so you see it. Um, this humanoid figure um, kind of like rises up uh, like above this dead whale. And as you see it, it like turns looking back at the ship. And I think that uh, you realize like its head is like kind of like a skull and it's wearing these robes that are in all manner of like disrepair and kind of tattered and you realize it's got like these kind of skeletal hands it's clearly undead um and lux fry doc you're all like seeing the same thing like doc you catch it from the deck lux as you're like moving around in the back doing ship things you see it through the porthole um and and yeah it like rises up and is staring at the ship and then it proceeds to like turn away from you and is like uh, begins like flying away from the dead whale towards this planet in the distance um and yeah as you guys are kind of like zooming around you could easily land on this thing though there are definitively like jellies and stuff all over it kind of creeping around um so what's the plan you want to like touch down i think ray would ask Certainly Lux, who's in the, you're in the, like, helm, right? Mm-hmm. You think we should land on the, sh- the ship there? Or on the whale? It's not a whale. Yeah, I guess we should get as close as we can. Uh, let's maybe try to avoid those jelly things, so I don't want to hurt the ship anymore. Yeah, so, Ray, I think we'll try to land it on... This creature in a at a space where there's the least amount of jelly. Got creatures. it. So I think that like there, there's like half of it that's all like kind of open and exposed, and you're like, uh, you like zoom around to the other side, right? And kind of like the ship like slowly lowers down, the four feet of it making contact, and um and like objects in uh, spell jammer like carry their own gravity. Like as soon as you kind of like touch down onto this whale corpse, um like the ship like adheres to it, right? And all of you could theoretically like jump out and walk around on it it will hold you on it so there are no oozes there's even no me. like rels uh indeed even you especially you um i thought you were so, gonna yeah. say objects and spell jammer appear closer than... that's what i thought <laughs> yeah, i should have i should have i really walked right past that one didn't i um so yeah you land on like the back side of like this dead kenduri whale um and yeah you're parked a lot of you are parked on the dead whale um, if you were like, gosh, Lux, you're the one who would know these things the best. Um, you know, the bones in particular are like nigh indestructible that like, regardless of like all the kind of space parasites that may come after this thing, like even these, these, uh, oozes that can like eat through metal and wood and all that kind of stuff. The bones are pretty like indestructible. Um, the like meat itself is actually like prized in like all different kind of corners of the galaxy. Uh, these things are like hunted by some people. There are like industrial space whale or fleets that someday I'm sure we'll have to destroy. And um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think Lux like makes her way up to the upper deck and is like, well, you guys want to harvest some of this stuff? 
Hey, uh, hey, Batman. Hey. Hey. You can use your, like, your knives. I don't know why I'm doing this. Can you use your knives and, like, <laughs> chop your stuff up? Yeah, of course. Great. Just show Let's me show that. me what you want me to chop. I'll, I love to chop things. That thing. Okay. Chop it up. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, the Badman uh, will, uh, he's got, like, Jeffrey on his shoulder. Mm -hmm, uh, he'll mm -hmm. just, like, sort of, like, uh, t pick up Jeffrey and, like, get dangerously close to, like, putting him up. But, no, he just puts him on the ground. <laughs> That Jeffrey can run around like you're free, Jeffrey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey scampering around on the back of the dead space well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoy, Jeffrey. Drink it in. Take it all in, <laughs> Jeffrey. I told you I'd show you the world. I uh, wouldn't recommend drinking it. Yeah, Lux falls and like jumps over the side. Come on. Uh, so I think uh, the bad man with uh, uh, psychic blades in hand will will follow Lux's lead, uh, carve carve whatever is needed to be carved. Okay, so uh, Lux, why don't you make a uh, like survival check with advantage as the bad man's helping you? What are the rest of you doing? Are you guys all going to help? You're going to start carving up on this carcass. Um, I think that Jake, with his uh, hatred of oozes is going to guard the ship and just kind of patrol. And if any oozes start to approach, he's going to, like, shoot them with his... Well, with his bow. Technically with his arrows. Okay, but are, cool, cool, are cool. Oozes, are oozes beasts? They're oozes. They're their own thing. They're just oozes. Uh, it's, it's like its own category. It's terrible. I can't, I can't charm them. Nope. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, you might if you spent enough time talking with them, Rhea, you know, but you cannot use your channel divinity as a uh, as a turtle cleric. To, he walks up um, and says, Jello. <laughs> bad. It's really bad. I'm sorry. Uh, I someone say, do the same. Someone like say Doc's Jello. Kind of... I do this for Zed. <laughs> Doc's got a position like opposite of Jake to make sure they're kind of looking. They've got that 360 view at all times. Okay. I think Rhea then will like stand by J and then like say that she could charm the oozes if they came near, uh, even though she can't. Mm -hmm. But to tell everybody, it, it's fine. If the oozes come, I got it's That's okay. So Eshrin. <laughs> There's some commonality. <laughs> just a few. Have I just I created the joke. same character? Yeah. Yeah. No. Just Eshrin in case nobody knows, uh, you should tell them if we can charm the uses. But yeah, uh, I, okay. I would say that the professor uh, will assist the bad man not in carving but in carrying the pieces back, utilizing his powerful build okay. as Excellent. a hippopotamus. Cool. Excellent. Um, so you're like taking these like big like bundles. There's like canvas and kind of rope. You, you guys are kind of packing all this stuff. You know that like uh, there can be like very valuable kind of oil made from all this stuff too. Um, and I think that there, uh, yeah, you, you end up spending about an hour. What about Asturias? What are you doing? Um, That's the rest I think of them. I maybe. am staying in the ship also, consulting maps and books and maybe doing research about where we should go next and or what to do with this space whale stuff once it um, gets back onto the ship. Okay, if, cool. If, uh, if Jake sees Asterius like starting to uh, get into research mode, he might recommend that they like, uh, oh, if you could find out what that planet over there is, or no, sorry, except much slower. Um, sure. <laughs> Uh, like, yeah, that would be great. Can I find out what that planet over there is? Yeah, why don't you make a uh, history check as we're gonna like talk about all those things that you were trying to find out? Cool. With my powerful build, I'll actually he I'll help uh, um, the professor carry carry stuff. Okay, back. cool. I think Jake has Jake has Ent vibes. Very Ent. Um, Doc, what are you doing in the midst? Oh, you're helping. You're kind of helping patrol. Right. My bad. Um, oof, uh, brutal, <laughs> brutal. You're not sure where you should be going mm -hmm. next. Um, you really Jake, are you know. helping me research? Or you just I was just <laughs> thinking suggesting that, no, he's what I'm researching. He was suggesting, unfortunately, yeah, he's focused yeah, no, on he was. I was thinking the same um, things. 
all tiefling should have advantage on history checks? Is that a thing that we established? I don't know. Uh, I mean, so that you're... seems fair to me. As, as a <laughs> think... sage researcher, as tiefling of the ancient people of tieflings. Yes, I think I think, I think that... your fellow sage is busy doing manual labor. Uh, yeah, I with, don't know why. <laughs> with whale parts on his back. I think you guys are able to harvest like a pretty good deal of the whale stuff over the hour. And I think the problem is a story is not that you don't learn anything, but it's taking you a really long time. Um, like, you know, you distracted by these things. Yeah. Right. You're like wandering off in like different directions and stuff and kind of like, yeah. Oh, what about this? What about that? But I think that you're able to uh, discern the name of the planet, like in the midst of all those kind of inquiries you had, you're not sure what to do with the whale stuff. Um, you're not really, entirely sure where Yavanna would have like wanted you to go next or where like you guys should go next as a general thing of your mission but I think that the one piece of information that you're able to walk away from this with is that um, that planet's name is um, Malpedi Prime yeah can you spell that yeah it's M-A-L-P-I-E-D-I Prime okay. Ding. incorrect <laughs> <laughs> Use it in a sentence. <laughs> yeah, that planet's name is Malpedi Prime. I thought I did. Language yeah, thank you, thank you, Actually, thank you for that. Origin would be great here. It's like, oh, dwarven, cool. Um, okay, so I think that probably like uh, about like psh, I don't know an hour goes by, and um, you're able to kind of you guys are able to take a lot like you you pull a lot of flesh you you're able to gather a lot of, I like, think the skin the stuff while he yeah. while the bad man is doing this he's gonna talk to Lux and the professor. So what do you do? <laughs> well, this now. Yeah, yes. Apparently, carrying ancient creatures' flesh is what I do. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty much been doing this stuff for most of my life. My parents were like merchants and stuff. Nice, I remember parents. I used to have those. <laughs> I can't take it. Gosh, I'm really sorry about that. Me too. I'd what do, what do you do? I stalk the shadows. I ride the night. <laughs> <laughs> I search the galaxy for great flavor and trees. <laughs> I protect Jeffrey. And I protect all of you. Well, we we appreciate it. They call me the bad man. Yes. I don't think I'm so bad after all. What, what do you call yourself? I, I've never, never really thought about that. I well, suppose I, I don't call myself anything. I, I guess I'm open to suggestions. Hmm. Hmm. There's a voice inside me. Ah, it's no, a... that was an arcane ability <laughs> used by the mind witness. <laughs> or, or, or it was the cat. <laughs> no, that's Jeffrey. There's a voice inside me that says a name. Jordy. Jo Jordy? Jord. Jordy. Jordy. It's short for Jordan. Ah. I see. <laughs> Nicknames. How lovely. Whose nickname? <laughs> Whatever it is, I am certain his parents would prefer that he be referred to as Nicholas name. <laughs> I think I like that Nicholas name. Call me that. <laughs> I Nick shall name. I, and I think the the professor looks over at Lux. <laughs> Just Kind she of... like shrugs. <laughs> I okay, you... Nick. And Josh uh... Wigner changes on his character sheet the bad man, <laughs> Nicholas name. Nicholas name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Reyes is the back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. So, yeah, that's just what you keep saying. Now yeah, he no. just needs to become a religious icon so he could be. I, I, I believe that. 
Perhaps you should take some time, live with the name, see if it suits you well. No, I'm pretty sure it's good. (laughs) (laughs) You know how sometimes you just know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, This feels right. It feels good. Nicholas' name. Yeah, I like it. All right, Nick. We, We can do Nick. That's, yeah. Very well. Well met, Nicholas. I think as uh, the badman <laughs> finds his name, <laughs> once he takes up uh, enough prominence as a you know, religious figure, maybe someday he will be a saint, but not this day. But I think that oh, no. oozes. I think that oozes are beginning to uh, creep out from around like the eaten part of the whale towards the ship. I think that uh, Asturias is like just like kind of reading their way through the star I'm doing my own business doing research <laughs> while they're all having a great time. I think Jake it's you realize building. it is. I think Jake you realize it's time to go. The oozes are coming right and so I think that a great <laughs> deal of uh, <laughs> a great deal of um, whale matter has been transferred to the ship by those with powerful builds and the oozes are uh, descending and so the lot of you like load back up into the dragonfly um who who's taking the helm one one quick question rich sure the the undead being we saw did mm-hmm. it originate anywhere like it came out of the came uh, from came the of- inside of the whale yeah right. did it did it emerge anywhere like immediately close to where we docked no, no, okay. no. Like, I imagine, like, half the whale is, like, kind of open, you know, yeah. um, and the uh, you get, you're get parked on the other side of it. It came side. out of the blowhole or something? Okay. That's no blowhole. <laughs> That's so true, Zed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We got to St. Nick. Yeah. I tried. I tried. Did I, it. I, I walked a We did, did it. it. Yeah, it's done. Should we call it? That's it, right? We should. We should. Okay. I think We're that yeah, we, did it. we 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 found it at the end. Surprise. Yep. That was D and D in space. Everybody, hope you had fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Catch you next year. Um, yeah, I think that's a lot of you load up your dead whale stuff. You get back into the dragonfly. Somebody takes the helm, and uh, you you ascend. Ooh. Uh, serious in the seat and I think that uh, as as we see the dragonfly like lifting off of this carcass the planet in the distance that is where we will leave our adventurers tonight oh, oh my god oh, so lovely and, great um, job that yep. was so much yeah. fun Around. that was not a nightmarish dramatic cliffhanger but it feels like the appropriate stopping point I too will pat myself uh, that was a lot of fun you guys that seemed like that a lot of fun so fun oh, yeah we carved up a space whale dead space whale Yay. Yeah, that was not what you were planning on. Uh, was that fun? That was okay, right? Yeah, yeah I thought it was going to be a much more nightmarish battle. Uh, you held up very well. That was great. There was a great yeah, I got held up for like four rounds. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, I don't mind at all. I think it's hilarious. I like immediately just paralyzed. <laughs> like, yeah. like, Jake's like, yeah. you got to go to the top of the show. I was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go. It's, 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 it's totally fun. It's totally fun. It happens. Oh it happens. Goodness. Um, thank you, Vaxel Dog. I'm glad you had fun. Thank you, Zach, That's for Austin. stopping in. Yes. Yeah. I know. I was trying not <laughs> okay. to dox him. I use everybody's <laughs> real names in here, and I'm like, dox oh gosh. Doxel Dog. Um, Voxes of Doxismal. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's great. Um, hey, everybody, thank you so much for this. I'm like really, really excited about this show. I think we have some cool stuff in uh, our future. I think it's going to be a blast. Uh, when we're done, I usually go around and let everybody plug what they got going on. So why don't we do that real quick, Taylor? What do you got going on? Um, just keep an eye on Twitter, Instagram, Ronnie422. Um, yeah, just keep an eye out. Hopefully, it'll start streaming soon. Just get making stickers yeah, as i am a graphic stickers. designer by the way she's a graphic designer and she's got a cricket now buy the stickers um cool <laughs> kurt what's going on with you uh regularly podcasting about top chef portland over on rob has a website otherwise you can follow me uh fo- follow me well, follow me uh i'm at kurt clark with two c's on the instagram on the twitter on the twitch i've been streaming a fair amount of immortals phoenix rising lately uh, that's been fun. 
Uh, otherwise, yeah, that's about it. Cool. Zed, how about you? Uh, I'm podcasting about Final Fantasy VIII with the bad man. Uh, <laughs> <don't say> <laughs> Say that you mean it? With uh with Nicholas me and Nicholas <laughs> name yeah, podcasting Nicholas about uh Final Fantasy Eight. Um Grace and I are podcasting about Pose on the Patreon feed and I'm hanging out with you on Sundays and now this day and maybe mm-hmm. also in real life in a few more days. I can't yeah. wait. That's gonna be really fun. I'm gonna uh see Zad as an actual human being, not on this like black mirror over here. That's gonna be really cool. <laughs> Um, uh, Josh, what about you? What's going on with you, buddy? Lots of podcasts. Lots of podcasts. Lots of podcasting. Uh, post your recaps on fire right now. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess relevantly, because it's May the 4th, I recorded uh, a recap of the first episode of The Bad Batch, the new Star Wars TV show with the great Brendan Fitzpatrick. I, I can't wait to listen to that. I love Brendan, uh, as you well know. He's fantastic, runs, and I can't wait to catch uh, the that. the Poster Recaps Twitter account. He's just been uh, such a great friend for so many years, and it was really fun to talk Star Wars with him. So that podcast is going to drop on Thursday. Uh, aforementioned FF8 podcast with Zed. Uh, Lost podcasting down the hatch. It's going to release early. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow, uh, actually, it's going to release early in about an hour and two minutes uh, <laughs> in, on the patron feed. Uh, and it is a, a, a role playing exercise in which the great you don't say Rich Filiberto himself appears. Uh, and if you thought the bad man was a bad man, you have not met Billy Wallace and Rodney Sesto, the characters played by myself and Mike Bloom, yeah. who are bad people. They're not good. Bad things will happen when they are around, and luckily will happen to them as well. Uh, they murdered a chef once, and then was they, really, they killed the guy that they brought with terrible. them just to make sure he didn't tell it. It was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. So it was wild. inevitably bad things are coming their way. So listen up and see what happens there. And just I don't know. That was another podcast. We've got a lot going on. Find the, the post show recaps on Patreon. Patreon.com yeah. slash post show recaps. There it is. Hang out with all of us. Uh, we are available to hang out and say hey. And other things yeah. other than the word hey. Yeah. We have a whole vocabulary over there. It's wild. Yeah. There are glossaries. It's a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for anybody out here watching this who is not there, go get there. Um, I think Melissa, you'll have fun. You? I think you'll have fun. You should come by. You'll, you'll have a good have time. have a ton of fun. Picking up members as we speak. dollars a month you could spend. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, people can follow me on Twitter at Melissa W28. I podcast uh, through the Patreon feed about Mighty Ducks. Uh, so that's exciting. <laughs> but not uh, all caps. <laughs> and occasionally on the, uh, I've been on some episodes of Dungeons and Dragons and Discord. So if uh, any of this is appealing, definitely check it out on the Patreon or hit me up in the Discord. Troy, how about you, sir? I have. No podcasts to promote. No children, no pets. Nothing that I would like <laughs> you to do. <laughs> except don't forget to be awesome and be kind to one another. Mm-hmm. I love that. Don't that shoot uh, your friends in the turtle shell. Don't shoot your friends <laughs> in the back. Do not as I say, not as I do. Shoot your friends in the turtle. Yes, the some of us have an average dexterity of plus zero. Of zero. <laughs> This was so much fun. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm delighted to come back at some point uh, uh, yet again and uh, see where this goes. Cool. Um, Grace? Um, Yeah, as Ed mentioned, podcasting about Pose on the Post Show Recaps patron feed. I have a podcast called The Hold Up, where we look at queer media from the past 10, 15, 20 years, see if it holds up. Um, I am going to be on Shit 90 Shows, Tommy, talking about A League of Their Own. Going to be on the Robinson Podcast Survivor Ranking uh, for Vanuatu tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, tomorrow night. Hell yeah, nice. I think that's it. I think that's all I got going on right now. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm me. I'm Rich. I'm DM Philly. Thank you all for stopping in. Please kick me a follow if you didn't already. I really appreciate everybody who stopped in tonight. Um, I hope this was fun. uh, You can catch all the other stuff that I'm doing right here. Uh, It gets loaded up on YouTube, DM Philly. You can follow me on Twitter. Um, Sunday, we'll be back with a couple of these wonderful, beautiful people that are hanging out here. Uh, Kings of Neon, a City of Mist role-playing game that we're really having like a lot of fun with and just kind of got awesomely weird and wild. And uh, yeah, Monday nights, Firelight Tales. 
Uh, I yeah, obsidian ruined. weird. <laughs> Damn right. Um, did it? I guess it might have. Uh, m- Monday night, Firelight Tales, Titans, Airs. We're at like crazy climax with that. You want to watch a traditional D&D game? I have a party of adventurers trapped in a dungeon fighting the like high paladin of the evil empire while a blue dragon waits outside the doors. Dungeons and dragons both happening in one <laughs> session. Good stuff. Did it. With that, um, I'm out. My cat's going crazy, so I got to leave. Good night, you guys. Good Thank night. you all for coming. Bye. We will be back. We will be back. We will be back. And may the 